Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, those of you that are just tuning in to uh, the YouTube channel here to catch the Heart Disciples versus the Bookbinder League in Air Regensburg. And the ball game scheduled to begin at 6 p.m. local time. But as you maybe have been able to figure out by watching what's going on on your screen, the Bookbinder League in Air team buses were stuck in what must have been a nightmare of a traffic jam between uh, Regensburg and Munich. They are only now arriving at the ballpark. So I imagine it's going to be probably 20 minutes or so before the ballgame actually gets underway. Uh, today, of course, being a the last day before a long holiday weekend here in the south of Germany, and pretty much all the traffic seems to be funneling itself right through the Munich area, heading south to uh, Austria and perhaps Italy. And uh, so the unfortunate Regensburg team bus the team buses were caught in that traffic jam, and uh, they are just now arriving at the ballpark as it is exactly 6 p.m. local time. My name is Tim Collins, and we are coming to you live from Heart Disciples Ballpark here in Sports Park Egelfing to the east of Munich. And uh, also weather-wise, it was a little bit questionable today. There was sun all day, and then there were some really nasty dark clouds, and it did rain. There was actually some thunder uh, but that seems to have blown away, and it is now sunny and beautiful, and the temperature is very pleasant, and I imagine we should have a good ball game. One of the things that will be interesting to see is how long it takes Regensburg to get ready. They are just now arriving in the dugout. Home plate umpire Dan DiBacco is on the field. The umpires, Patrick Meister and Vlado Cupic, are all ready for the game, and of course they knew well ahead of time that the Legionnaire were running late, and so we'll see what kind of delay we are going to have. These two teams, of course, met last Wednesday, and Regensburg prevailed, winning a game by a score of 8-1 to one behind the great pitching of Mike Bolsenbrook, who's back to being his old self. He's having another fantastic year, leading the league in ERA with a 1.06 ERA. But for Regensburg, they're going to be sending their left-hander, the 23-year-old Bill Greenfield, to the mound, and he'll be getting the start today. His number is actually are a little bit deceptive. He's got an ERA of around 5, but if you really take a look at his numbers, his whip is 1.29. That's walks and hits per innings pitched, and that's, if you compare it to, like, the major league average of 1.3, that's actually better than average, and you have to figure in the Bundesliga the average is a little higher than that because we got a lot, of, a lot more walks and hits in this league. And so Bill Greenfield has actually pitched quite well. And uh, so... I just wanted to update you on that situation. I am now going to go get the lineup from Kai Grunauer, and we'll be back probably in 15 minutes for a ball game.
All right, ladies and gentlemen, I am back, and I now have the lineups for the Bookbender League in Air Regensburg. You've noticed that, uh, that it is five minutes after 6 p.m., and the ballgame is scheduled to start at 6 p.m., and it has not begun yet, and the reason is traffic. In fact, everyone seemed to be stuck in it today. The Bookbender League in Air, there were only about four players from the League in Air here that arrived, maybe around 5.30, and they were the only ones, and now the rest of the team has arrived about seven, eight minutes ago, they started walking on the field, and they're starting to uh, take some warm-ups, running around in the outfield, stretching, trying to get loosened up. And, uh, you know, I started talking about at the very top of the broadcast, in case you were with me then, that Bill Greenfield had pitched a little bit better than his numbers indicate. And that may be true, but head coach Kai Grunauer is going to take no chances. And even though this is technically the foreigner game, the second game of the two-game series. Remember, the first game must be pitched by a European pitcher, and the second game must be, well, second game anyone can pitch. Uh, Bill Greenfield is not going to get the start today. It's going to be Mike Bolsenbrook, and Bolsenbrook has basically been the best pitcher in the Bundesliga so far this year, ERA of 1.06. He's been absolutely phenomenal. Let me actually check that. I might have been quoting an old stat from the Bundesliga website, but Mike Bolsenbrook, Yep, 1.06, that is correct. In 34 innings, 3-0, he's allowed 24 hits, only four earned runs. Like I said in the last game, he has walked one batter in 34 innings and struck out 39. So his walks, hits per innings pitched, 0.73. That is minuscule, and it is amazing. And that's a great reason why he would get the start tonight, asked by his coach Kai Grunauer. So I'm not sure how long the delay is going to be. I imagine it's going to be maybe about 10 more minutes. And here's an announcement. So I guess it's going to be five minutes before the plate conference. That's the official word. And uh, the Hard Disciples eventually will take the field. It's going to be Mike Click getting his second start for the Disciples since they picked him up. The Disciples right now have two foreign pitchers, Darren Fisher, who pitched well against Stuttgart last weekend in the sweep on Saturday as the Disciples swept the Stuttgart Reds in the day-night doubleheader. And uh, they're going to try to even this series between the Bookbender Ligonier and the Hard Disciples. Ligonier, of course, won last week by a score of 8-1 to one behind Mike Bolsenbrook, the guy who's going to be pitching today. And so... So Mike Click will get his second start. It's actually, he had normally been used as a relief pitcher in most of his career, going back to his days in independent ball. And uh, he told me after that second game, after the first game, that he had to just get used to saving some of the gas in the tank a little bit. And uh, so Mike Click will get his second start. He was very good against Ulm and uh, received rave reviews from some Folks that I know that are pitching savvy people, I guess that would be, I'll just say his name, Tim Williford, the guy who's joined me on some of the broadcasts. He went and sat, I don't know if you see from the center field camera, but there's a flagpole a little bit to my left. This is me. I'm waving to you behind the MSD uh, logo there up to the left. So I'm a little bit offset. I can't see necessarily the angle of the break of the different pitches that the pitchers are throwing. I can tell if there's a break, but I can't really tell how much it breaks. Well, Williford went and sat right directly behind home plate with a perfect angle to see the movement, and he was very impressed, came back and said, whoa, that's nasty. So we shall see what Mike Click can do against the League and Air lineup. This is a very good hitting team. They are hitting 287 as a team, and they actually, as a team OPS, have an 831 clip. That's very good. They have a lot of players who can hit the ball all over the park. As a team, they have seven home runs. They've hit five triples and 32 doubles. That's Definitely a good way to score runs, of which they have also done many. They've scored 120 runs, and this is their 13th. Well, this will be their 14th game. They come in with a record of 9-4. and four. The Hard Disciples are 8-4. and four. The Hard Disciples have played one less game, and that's due to the fact that there was a rainout in the very first day of the year versus the heidenheim Heideköpfe. So they have yet to get that game back. I think that game is scheduled for May the 31st. But at any rate, this one is going to get underway any moment now, probably in the next few minutes. 
As I mentioned before, in case you're just joining us, the Bookbender League in air, stuck in traffic between Regensburg and Munich. And uh, this being the first evening before a long holiday weekend, there was all kinds of activity on the roads. And, um, you know, always the most important thing is to arrive safely at the ballpark. And uh, so fortunately, Regensburg has done that. We, you know, I, I have to mention it's been a sad, sad weekend in the Bundesliga uh, because of the tragic car accident that took place on Saturday after the ball game between the Berlin Flamingos and the Untouchables Paderborn involving uh, one of the Flamingos players. If you haven't seen it in social media, uh, I'm sure you can find it. The Flamingos have been uh, trying to rally around their teammate, Ron Rodriguez. Has, uh, that was an absolutely devastating event that forces, forced me at least to sort of think about how baseball makes you happy and uh, the things that you need to do to stay happy so that if something horrible like this happens, you can help put things in perspective. And uh, so we're happy that the Regensburg players arrived safely today. However, the ball game is going to be delayed as a result. And also just if you, if you are so inclined, if you're the type of person who would like to send some prayers the way of the Berlin Flamingos, please do that because uh, a tragic event took one of the members of the baseball family in Germany over the weekend. Ihr dürft ruhig klatschen. Bernd Radovic, Jan Endriat, Darren Fischer, Max Leidinger, Cedric Bassell, Jan Tomek, Titus von Kapf und Kevin Treasel. Und damit kommen wir zur Starting Lineup der Munich Hardy Disciples heute. Lukas Steinlein. Lima in right field, Nate Thomas, Christoph Ziegler, Will Thorpe, Austin Diemer, Richie Klein, Miggy Pinero, Dennis Wallace, David Wallace and our starting pitcher, heute auf dem Mount, Michael Click. Als Manager unterstützt das Team Philip Howard und als Coach uh, Christopher Howard. You know, one of the folks, uh, one of the things that uh, must be considered whenever we play these night games here in Munich, and especially now since we're starting a few minutes late, looks like the plate conference is going to begin now as Chris Howard is out there behind home plate meeting with the umpires, Patrick Meister and Vlado Cupic and Dandy Baco will be coming out there. But one thing to consider is that, you know, this ballpark, yes, we have lights. <laughs> and they are in extremely inadequate for when it actually gets dark. And it's not really meant to be night games. Here in southern Germany, of course, it will stay light until quite late in the evening, especially in June. It'll be almost 10 p.m. before the sun goes down here. But late in the game, it can get difficult to see. And if this game were to take a long time, then... Uh, there's a possibility we may see some circus baseball in the evening because uh, any time a ball sits in the air and goes above those lights, nobody can see it. And it's your guess where it will land. So the plate conference is about to begin. And it looks like the ball game is about to begin. Hard disciples are not yet on the field. But Kai Gronauer comes out, shakes the hands of the umpire crew. So 
Hope you're enjoying your day wherever you may be. Hopefully you're not stuck in traffic. But, of course, if you are, don't forget there's the Mind Sports Radio app. You can listen to the ball game as the lineups are being exchanged. The Heart Disciples, when they do finally take the lineup, they're going to take the field, rather, they're going to take the field with this defensive alignment. Christoph Ziegler will be playing third base. Nate Sean Thomas playing shortstop. Richard Klein playing second base. Dennis Wallace is the first baseman. And then in the outfield, Miguel Pinheiro again in left field. Austin Diemer is in center field. Luke Steinlein in right field. The catcher, of course, is William Thorpe. And on the mound, the right-hander from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, Michael Click. You know, I had sort of been looking forward a little bit to a uh, Philadelphia matchup. Bill Greenfield, the left-hand pitcher for the League in Air, is also from the Philadelphia area. And uh, I do not know if the two knew each other. I think Click is a few years older than Greenfield. Click is at 27 years of age, I believe, and Greenfield 23. But that doesn't mean they might not be aware of each other, both from the Philadelphia area. But Bolsonbrook who was at one time in the Philadelphia Phillies organization, is getting the start for the league in air. So I guess there's that connection. Meanwhile, this is the longest plate conference I think I've ever experienced. <laughs> there is a new net, by the way, that goes all around the outfield. If you look on the outfield camera and you look, you can see it, that extra white net. You see it running across the top of your screen. That is new, and it's due to the construction of these office buildings taking place right across the street, and it's meant to prevent more balls from flying over and, you know, damaging some property over there. The problem is it's only attached at the very top, which means when the wind blows, it's flapping inside the ballpark, and uh, there's a space between the top net and the bottom net that was already there. And according to the ground rules, you've got to hit it over to get a home run. So it's going to be a little harder technically to hit home run, but it's also going to be a potential spot where, uh, you know, it's going to be tough to see if it went over the field or not. Well, the Disciples have taken the field. And Mike Click, the right-hander, is going to throw his warm-up pitches. I'll give you his complete numbers in a moment. There you see him, number 32. Right-hander from the Philadelphia area. He has pitched in Australia. He's pitched for a number of uh, very good independent league teams, including the St. Saint Paul Saints, I believe. And uh, Click, in five innings against the Ulm Falcons, struck out 11 and walked one. He did give up two earned runs on six hits. So his ERA technically 3.6, but he also... I mentioned those 11 strikeouts against one walk. He was very good. He's got a fastball and a slider, and he throws hard, and his slider has excellent bite to it. So the lineup that Click is going to face is... Not in graphic form, I apologize. It's because of the late arrival. I didn't have time to put the graphic together, but this is what it is. Lucas Yon, the second baseman, leads off for the league in error. Matt Vance, the right fielder today, bats second. Eric Harms is the designated hitter. He is batting third. Mitch Stefan, who had four hits in his return to par last week, is going to bat cleanup and play first base. Marcel Jimenez, the center fielder today, will bat fifth. David Grimes in the lineup batting sixth and playing left field. Elias von Garsen is the catcher and he is batting seventh. Giannis Mushik gets the start at third base and he will bat eighth and the shortstop batting ninth the young talented shortstop Alexander Schmidt. And so Lucas Jan is going to step up to the plate and Michael Click is going to go to work and it looks like we are ready for baseball. First pitch will be I guess at 6.19 p.m. And Austin Diemer standing right in front of the center field camera. That is perfect. <laughs> Lucas Jan at the plate against Mike Click. And the first pitch of the game is a fastball strike called. And we are underway at 6.20 p.m. So 20 minutes late, all in all. 
Not as bad as it certainly seemed like it might be. One strike to count on Lucas Yon, left-hand hitter, stands very back of the box. Nobody out. Just getting started. The next pitch. This ball is fouled off to the left. Pinheiro gives it a look, but it's into the disciples' bullpen. Strike two. I absolutely did not see that ball. <laughs> Hear a little wind. Nothing in two. A couple of fastballs. We're waiting for that ball. I guess ricocheted out towards the foul line, and we had to wait for that to be retrieved. No balls, two strikes. Click from the stretch all the time. There's the 2 Swing and a miss, strike three, and that's how the ball game starts. Three fastballs. And there's the first out of the ball game. That will bring up Matt Vance. Vance hitting at 275. He's got 11 hits and 40 at bats. He's got two homers and two doubles among his hits. OPS of 928. He also walks a lot. He has drawn eight walks this year. So Mike Click with three pitches and his first K of the evening. Vance, a right-hand hitter. Left side of the infield is Ziegler on the grass, the pitch. That's a fastball strike. Four consecutive fastballs. Vance taken. This is the first time he's seen Michael Click. No balls, one strike. Here it comes. That one is a little bit high, one ball, one strike. At this time, the sun in the outfield can be brutal. It's very low over the horizon, and all of the outfielders, and the infielders for that matter, and even Click himself, are staring into it. One ball, one strike. Here it comes. Tapped foul, looked like a little slider. And the count, one ball, two strikes on Matt Vance. By the way, Lucas Jan, who struck out, had been hitting 269. Didn't give you his numbers the first time up. We'll give you more detail on that next time he comes up. One ball, two strikes. Michael Click. Ahead of Matt Vance. Top of the first inning. One out. No score in the game. Click from the stretch. And here's the one-two pitch. That one bounced. And it's ball two. Two balls and two strikes. Ball game starting exactly 20 minutes late. About an hour before game time, it looked like there might be a thunderstorm. That has thankfully passed. Two and two. Here it comes. And he just missed low and outside. Full count now. Payoff pitch. Here it comes. Chopped down the third baseline. Foul past Ziegler. Foul ball. And Vance will have to come back. Still a full count. Mike Click, who is 29, actually. He will turn 30 in August this year. He is listed on baseball reference as being born in Australia, but he told me himself he's from Philadelphia. <laughs> Three balls and two strikes. And the pitch on the way. Got him with a slider at the knees on the outside corner. Very good pitch from Click, especially on a payoff pitch. Take a look at this. So two down, two strikeouts. Well, that one just dropping right at the knees, and Vance knew it. He's, his knees buckled on that, I think. Click has pitched in the Frontier League. He's pitched in the American Association with the Lincoln Salt Dogs. That's the team I was thinking of, not the St. Paul Saints, excuse me. Pitch for the Canberra Cavalry, the York Revolution. 
So now Eric Harms, the designated hitter, steps up to the plate. And the first pitch to him has a fastball that burns the outside corner at the knee. Strike one. Good pitch from Click. He's got a very relaxed motion. Takes a deep breath after he comes set. And then he lets it fly. Here's the 01. Half swing, foul to the screen, 0 and 2. That was a slider or a curve of some type. <laughs> 0 and 2. Michael Click trying to strike out the side. Struck out Yawn on three pitches. He got Vance on a 3 2 off speed pitch. Now he's 0 2 on Harms. And the pitch. Chopped on the ground to the right side. Klein fields it and throws to first in time. But Richie looked like he was struggling a little bit with the sun, but he gets a nice easy hop and makes the play to first base to end the top of the first inning. At the end of a half inning of play, no score between the Bookbinder League and Air Regensburg and the Hard Disciples. This is Hard Disciples Baseball presented at Fundem Gesundheit Center name and MSD. The right-hander Mike Bolsenbrook is on the mound, and he was fantastic in his start against the Hardest Liples last week. He pitched eight innings and struck out ten and did not allow a run. And so he's going to go again today. Overall in the season, ERA of 1.06. 39 strikeouts against one walk. And behind him defensively, in left field, you have David Grimes. In center field, Marcel Jimenez. In right field, Matt Vance. The third baseman is Giannis Mushik. The shortstop is Alex Schmidt. The second baseman is Lucas Jan. And the first baseman, Mitch Stefan. Behind the plate doing the catching, Elias von Garsen. And the lineup, the lineup that Bolsonbrook will face looks like this. Luke Steinlein, Nate Sean Thomas, Chris Ziegler, one, two, three. Then Thorpe, Deemer, Klein, 4, 5, 6, Pinheiro, Wal Dennis Wallace, and David Wallace, the designated hitter, 7, 8, 9. So here we go, the bottom of the first inning. The first pitch is in there for a strike. Nothing new from Bolsonbrook on that one. Works very quickly. 0-1 to Luke Steinlein, the pitch. And that one floats in for strike two, 0-2. Luke Steinlein hitting 268, 11 hits and 41 at bats, but he's also drawn 10 walks. So he gets on base a lot. Here's the 0 2. Little breaking pitch away, one ball and two strikes. That was a tough one to take from Steinlein. That's exactly what Bolsenbrook wants to do. He threw a couple of fastballs in and then trying to entice him over that outside corner to expand the zone. The 1 2, fastball up and in, 2 and 2. Steinlein was looking for something out over the plate, and that fastball buzzed him up and in. And that right there is uh, one of the main pitching strategies known to mankind. Two balls and two strikes. Nobody out bottom of the first, no score. The pitch just missed the knees a little bit low, and the count full, three balls and two strikes. Bolsenbrook works extremely quickly. He never leaves the rubber. He comes set as soon as possible. And now the payoff pitch to Luke Steinlein. Line drive, base hit over the leaping Alex Schmidt, the shortstop. And Steinlein leads off the game with a hard hit single. 
That ball had a nice sound to it. That's probably, I don't think the Disciples hit a ball that hard against Bolsonbrook the entire game, except for maybe, maybe Chris Ziegler's double in the last game. So Nathan Thomas will step up to the plate with Luke Steinlein on first base. Steinlein being held on by his old buddy, Mitch Stefan. Nathan Thomas, the hitter. And now Marcel Jimenez is going to stand right in front of the center field camera. Steinlein out first, the pitch swung on, popped foul out of play, strike one. Nathan Thomas. 15 hits in 44 at-bats. That's a 341. Two of those hits are doubles, and he's also got nine walks, 816 OPS. He's also six for seven in the stolen base department. He squared around to bunt and had to jackknife out of the way of a little slider running in, in on his waist. One ball and one strike to count. Luke Steinlein, the runner at first base. One and one, here it comes. Steinlein was going and the pitch is fouled away. One and two. Olsenbrook going after Nathan Thomas with fastballs. He did throw that one slider, but it was way in on his hands. One and two. Let's see what Steinlein does. Bolson Brooks pitch. A big chopper to the right side, and Jan picks it, throws to second. They get the force, the throw from Schmidt, not in time, but that was a heck of a play by Lucas Jan, Lu Lucas Jan, excuse me, as he had to stab that ball on a short hop to his left, and then he whirled and fired a strike to Alexander Schmidt. So Steinlein is forced at second base. The play goes 4 6. And that will bring up Chris Ziegler. Again, you know, Jan having to deal with the sun. Made a nice play. Fastball high and outside to Chris Ziegler. Ball one. Nate Sean Thomas now the runner at first base. Ziegler, a left-hand hitter, hitting 279. And there's a check on Thomas. He's back. Ziegler, 12 hits and 43 at-bats. Five of his hits are doubles. He also has a triple. And he scored 12 runs for the Disciples. Thomas not going. A swing and a miss from Siegler. Strike one. One ball, one strike. Chris Siegler, longtime member of the Heart Disciples, former Fusin Royal Bavarian. Bolsenbrook with a 1-1 count on him. Thomas not going. The pitch, fastball under the hands of Ziegler, Bolsenbrook, staring in, wanted to know where the pitch was. You can see Von Garson setting up inside. Two and one the count. And there's a check on Thomas, who actually was taking a step towards second base, but Bolsenbrook just with a little flip toss over there. And Thomas still able to get back. Umpire, home plate umpire, Dandy Baco. First base umpire is Vlado Chupic, and at third base, Patrick Meister. There's a swing and a miss. The runner was going. Throw to second base is not in time as it was off to the first base side of second base. So Nathan Thomas with his seventh stolen base in eight attempts. The count now two balls and two strikes on Siegler, and the Disciples have a runner in scoring position with one out. Looked like a changeup. Siegler way out in front of it. Two and two. And the pitch. A little cue shot up the third base side. That ball's hugging the grass, and it rolls, rolls, and rolls, and finally goes foul. Well, that ball changed direction about three times. First, it looked like it was going to stay fair. Then it hit the grass and came back towards the line, and then it again went towards the grass. And then it switched again and finally went foul, so everybody has to go back. Thomas goes back to second base. Ziegler back to the batter's box. We are in the bottom of the first inning. No score in the ballgame between the Heart Disciples and the Bookbinder League in Air Regensburg. My name is Tim Collins. 
Hope you're enjoying the day, wherever you may be. Two balls, two strikes. More fans starting to show up at the ballpark here, as a lot of them were caught in traffic as well. Bolsenbrook's 2-2 pitch, and instead he checks on Nate Thomas at second base. Ziegler, left-hand hitter with power. Two and two. And the pitch. That ball smacked, and it's fair down the right field line into the corner. Nate Sean Thomas is going to come around and score. Ziegler is at second base. He is rounding, headed for third. And I think he is in there with a triple, and it's 1-0 Disciples. Boy, he lined that ball down the first baseline. Mitch Stefan, no chance. And I actually, I lost sight of the ball, and I thought for a second the ball had gone out of play down in the corner. And then suddenly I saw it being thrown back in. So the Disciples do something they rarely do against Bolsonbrook, and that is take a lead. Chris Ziegler, the runner at third base. The corner infielders, Mushik and Stefan, are going to play up. Well, now Mushik is backing up. Will Thorpe. Thorpe is a guy who will drop down a bunt every now and then, of course. He's leading the Disciples, of course, in slugging. Up there with a runner at third base and one out, the pitch. Breaking pitch, and it's on the outside corner for a strike. So a couple of hard-hit balls in the inning. The single by Steinlein was really hammered, and Siegler got around on that one, the 0-1. Thorpe takes a breaking ball low and outside, one ball, one strike. So it's one nothing Disciples here in the bottom of the first inning. As I've just noticed, the scoreboard is wrong. Going to have to fix that in a second. One and one. Here's the pitch. Swing and a miss. Thorpe looked like he was not quite sure if he wanted to swing at that one. It was a very awkward swing. He was out in front of it. And now he's behind in the count. One ball and two strikes. Bolsenbrook comes set. Siegler off third base. The pitch fouled to the screen. Thorpe trying desperately to make contact. You know Bolsenbrook wants the strikeout or a pop-up here, something to keep Siegler at third base. And Thorpe, who chokes up on the bat, he's got a very short stroke. You know, when he's going for a home run, you will know, but that was not the home run cut. That was the drive home run with a ground ball cut. There's the 1-2 pitch. And there's a ground ball. Fair down the third baseline for a base hit. Siegler comes around to score. Thorpe headed to second base. The throw is not in time. And the Disciples lead 2-0. They have a single, a double, and a triple in the inning. And Siegler had to duck to get out of the way of that ground ball. The pitch was down. Let's take a look at the pitch. It was a changeup, I believe. And Thorpe really hit it hard and got it past Giannis Mushik, the third baseman. And so now the Disciples have a 2-0 lead. Austin Diemer, the hitter. Will Thorpe is on second base. Diemer hitting at 308. He's also got two home runs on the year. The pitch. Fastball. That's a strike. Letter high. Nothing in one. Diemer. In his first chance facing Mike Bolsenbrook, went 0 for 3 with two strikeouts. No balls, one strike. Here's the pitch. Curve, and he popped it up. Foul over the plate from behind us. That was a hanging curveball, and Deemer had a good cut. Well, you have to wonder if the late arrival in the sort of hurried warm up routine is affecting Bolsenbrook at all. Looks to be throwing hard, but he's been hanging some pitches. 0-2, the pitch. Fouled and off the mitt of Elias von Garson. It kicks to the backstop where Richard Klein, the on-deck hitter, is going to go and get it. No balls, two strikes, still the count. There's one out. Will Thorpe, runner at second base. 2-0 Disciples. Mike Bolsenbrook on the mound. Right-hander who has... Giving up three hits and two runs in the inning. 0-2 on Austin Diemer. There's one out. Thorpe off second base. Here's the pitch. And it's cued foul. 
off to the right, and it just missed hitting. I think that's Paco Garcia over there who almost got hit in the shins by that little cue shot line drive. Was not hit hard. 0-2, Bolsenbrook set. Thorpe off second base. The pitch, and that fastball is high. 1-2. Bolsenbrook up to 26 pitches. Last week, it seemed like Bolsenbrook only needed 26 pitches to get through the first five innings. One and two. Here it comes. Outside, two and two. Those last two pitches, Bolsenbrook fell off to the first base side of the mound. And that is very uncharacteristic for him. He's a veteran. Obviously, he knows how to right the ship, I think. So the disciples maybe won't get too many more opportunities. The 2-2. Swing and a foul tip into the mitt. Hold, and it's held on by Elias von Garson. So that's strike three. Second out of the inning. And the first strikeout for Bolsenbrook. Take a look at that pitch. I think he just went after him with a fastball. Enough messing around with all that. Sliders, that was a challenge pitch. Fastball right down the pipe, and Deemer foul tipped it. So Richie Klein steps up now. A little meeting on the mound. Paco Garcia out to have a chat with Mike Bolsenbrook. Not sure what this is about. Bolsenbrook and Elias von Garson. I'm going to take a look at that last pitch. I wonder if this is some sort of... If Bolsenberg doesn't feel right, it's pure speculation on my part. Now the home plate umpire, Dan DiBacco, goes out. I'm looking at the replay just to see if there's any kind of reaction. Bolsenberg now is smiling. I think Paco Garcia just wanted to check and make sure. So Richard Klein steps up to the plate with two outs. William Thorpe is on second base. The Disciples leading 2-0 in the bottom of the first inning. And the pitch to Klein. That's a strike at the knees, a fastball, 0-1. Richie, 255, 12 hits and 47 at-bats. But he does have three doubles and a home run. He has also walked 12 times. And it's getting windy, as you can hear. I'm going to remove that bag from the microphone. The pitch, strike two on the outside corner. That was a little slider from Bolsenbrook. So Klein in the hole, 0-2. And the pitch. Check swing. He went around. Oh, did he? Yes, he did. And uh, that is strike three. To end the inning, two strikeouts. But the Disciples get two runs on three hits. No errors and one man left on base. And at the end of a, an inning of play here in Har, it's the Disciples 2 and the Bookbinder Legionnaire Regensburg nothing. This is Har Disciples Baseball presentiert von dem Gesundheitsunternehmen MSD.
So we move to the top of the second inning. The Heart Disciples leading this ballgame by a score of 2 to nothing. And uh, Mitch Stefan, the ex-Heart Disciple, is going to step up to the plate against Mike Click. Stefan hitting 262. He's got 16 hits in 61 at-bats for the league in here. Six doubles. No home runs as of yet. Seven, 17 runs batted in. He has only drawn two walks all year, however. And here we go. Mike Click has been given a lead. He struck out two of the three hitters he faced on the first pitch to Stefan, who shows bunt because, once again, there's nobody on the left side of the infield. And he took it for a ball. Ball one. This is the defensive positioning. Chris Siegler, the only man on the left side of the diamond on the infield. Nate Sean Thomas is... Behind the bag, between first and second. Pitches inside, ball two. Two balls, no strikes. Richard Klein is in short right field. Outfield is straight away. With, well, Pinheiro is playing in the left center field alleyway. 2-0 oh the count. Here it comes. And there's a fastball strike on the outside corner, two and one. Stefan, I mean, I've seen him hit fly balls all over the place, but you're right. Ground balls to the left side doesn't really often happen for him. And uh, you don't often see a shift like this in this league. I've seen it going back to 2014. And ironically enough, here's the 2-0 pitch. Swing and a miss. 2-2. Two two. That was a 2-1 pitch. Excuse me. It's now 2-2. Two two. But ironically enough, the only team I ever saw do this shift, besides what the Disciples are now doing, uh, was the Stuttgart Reds, led, led at the time by uh, Troy Williams. And they did it against Mitch Stefan, who was then with the Disciples. Two and two. Here's the pitch. S fouled off to the left. Squibbed that direction. Troy Williams, of course, now working as a scout for the New York Yankees. He's the man responsible for Ryan Bollinger's trip to the States as a professional ball player. Two and two to Stefan. Little breaking ball, and Stefan tops it over towards his dugout. Picked up by David Grimes, who's the second on deck hitter. Marcelo Jimenez, the on deck hitter, is pretty close to the home plate area. Two and two. Here it comes. Popped up, left side. Miguel Pinheiro drifting over to his right. Still drifting, and now he's got it for the first out. Marcel Jimenez will be the next hitter as Stefan pops out for out number one. By the way, after Jimenez, it'll be David Grimes. Four, five, and six in the lineup for the Ligonier as the Disciples lead this ballgame 2 nothing. David Grimes this year, hitting at 160, four hits and 25 at-bats. Of his four hits, he's got a double and a triple, however. Four runs batted in. Nine walks, he has struck out 10 times. And Michael Click from the stretch deals a breaking ball. That's outside, ball one. Excuse me, I just read David Grimes' statistics. It's Marcel Jimenez who is at the plate right now, so I'll read you his. He's hitting 318. Seven for 22. And he hits a high fly ball, left field. Pinheiro racing back, and it is off the wall. He plays the carom perfectly and fires it to Nate Thomas, but Jimenez slides into second base with a double. Jimenez, he's got that short stroke and really pulls his hands in. And he drove that ball over Miguel Pinero's head. It hit the base of the fence, which is actually metal. The fence is now a lot higher than it was before, thanks to that new netting that's been added. It was just added yesterday. So it is... 
probably about 35 feet high, I would guess. Jimenez at second base with one out. The hitter now, David Grimes, and the pitch. That's a strike letter high. Nothing in one on Mr. Grimes. That base hit for Jimenez, the first hit for the Legionnaire in, in this game. The Disciples got three hits and two runs against Mike Bolsonbrook. Mike Click looks in for the sign from Thorpe. Now he's got one. Comes set, checks on Jimenez. Checks him again, and now the 0-1. Curve and a beauty, strike two. There are so many moving parts to executing a pitch. First you have to, you know, pick your strategy, what tack plan you're gonna have with the hitter, and then you have to keep an eye on the base runner. And then of course you have to execute it. You have all that time to think about it right before you do it. It's extremely difficult. Here's the 0-2 pitch on the way to David Grimes. Fastball is outside. One ball, two strikes. The shortstop, Nate Thomas, and the second baseman, Richie Klein, are back. Both probably about oh, five meters or so away from the second base bag. No pickoff attempt. One and two, Jimenez off second base. One out, and the pitch on the way. And that is strike three. Breaking ball, and David Grimes had no chance. Four Ks, excuse me, three Ks in the ball game now for Michael Click. And that will bring up Elias von Garson. Take another look at this pitch. That's that's a very good curveball from Michael Click. So Elias von Garson steps up to the plate. Elias von Garson hitting at 296, eight hits and 27 at bats. One of his hits is a double. Everything else singles. Two outs. Marcel Jimenez with excellent speed on second base. The pitch, fastball missed outside. Ball one. Thorpe, I think, was setting up inside, and that pitch trailed back out over the outer part of the plate. Might have caught the plate, but if you're reaching across like that, you're probably not going to get the call. It's 2-0 hard, leading Regensburg. We're in the top of the second inning. Jimenez off second base, two outs, the pitch. Fastball missed a little bit high, two balls and no strikes. The Disciples today, by the way, do have Kevin Treasel in the bullpen. They also have Darren Fisher, this being the foreigner game. Anybody can pitch. 2-0. Here it comes. Breaking ball, half swing, rolled foul into the Regensburg dugout for strike one. Two balls and one strike. But you know when somebody has a 2-0 count and they take a swing like that, that they were not seeing the pitch Not only that, but Click throwing a breaking ball on 2-0 to the number seven hitter in the lineup. That is respect. Two and one the count now. Two outs in the inning, Jimenez off second base. And Click's pitch, swing and a foul to the screen for strike two. The Disciples got two runs on three very hard hits off Mike Bolsonbrook in the bottom of the first inning. Jimenez in this inning doubled with one out. And he's still planted on second base with two outs. Elias von Garson with a 2-2 count, trying to bring him home. Cut that lead in half. Mike Click. Shaking off a couple of signs from Thorpe, and now von Garson asks for more time. But you'll often see the pace slow down a little bit when there are runners on. It's a pressure situation. Click wants to make sure he executes his game plan here. Now he's got a sign he likes and comes set two and two. And here's the pitch. There goes Jimenez for third. The pitch is high. The throw to third is not in time. Jimenez had a walking lead, and you could see that coming. Click wasn't paying all that much attention to him. Well, if you're going to go with two outs, you better make it, and Jimenez did. So Marcel Jimenez steals third base. By the way, he is now three for three in stolen base attempts. Doesn't really make that big a difference to the Disciples, although now he could score on a wild pitch. Three balls and two strikes. Two outs in the inning. And the pitch. 
Fastball, strike three called on the inside corner. Two looking strikeouts for Michael Click. And he gets out of the inning. He's got four Ks through two. No runs. One hit, no errors, and one man left on base. And at the end of one and a half innings of play, it's the Hard Disciples 2, the Bookbender Legionnaire, nothing. This is Hard Disciples Baseball presentiert von dem Gesundheitsunternehmen MSD. We move to the bottom of the second inning, two to nothing. The Hard Disciples leading the Bookbinder Legionnaire Regensburg. Mike Bolsenbrook gave up two runs on three hits in the first inning, and he will go back to work facing seven, eight, nine in the order: Miguel Pinheiro, Dennis Wallace, and David Wallace. Miguel Pinheiro comes in hitting at 298, 14 hits, and 47 at bats. Little Miggy, and the pitch is just off the plate outside, ball one. Bolsenbrook with two strikeouts to finish the inning. And you wonder if maybe just the delay, the traffic delay, there's a swing and a miss for strike one, affected his warm-up a little bit. And maybe he needed to get through that first inning, and now he will settle down. You just don't know. One ball, one strike. The pitch, swing and a miss, strike two. Pinheiro, when he faced Bolsenbrook in the last time was one for three he struck out twice but he did hit a double to deep center field off of him one and two here it comes swing and a miss strike three that's three consecutive strikeouts for Mike Bolsenbrook going back to last inning that was a fastball nothing fancy there here it is and hit it and Miggy didn't that'll bring up Dennis Wallace Dennis Wallace four for 46 but he must have had some hits over the weekend in Stuttgart, and that's got to feel good for him. The young player who's getting his first chance to really play regularly in the first Bundesliga, and he swings, flailing away at a high fastball, strike one. He's got power when he can make contact. 0-1, Bolsenbrook working quickly. The pitch, strike two, right at the knees on the inside corner. And here it comes. Strike three swinging, high fastball. And that's four consecutive strikeouts for Bolsonbrook. Diemer Klein last inning, and now Pinheiro and Dennis Wallace. That'll bring up David Wallace. David hitting 211, eight hits and 38 at bats. He's the designated hitter. Right hander against right hander, the pitch from Bolsonbrook. Fastball's high. One ball, no strikes. Bolsenbrook back to working very quickly. Here's the 1-0. Strike right at the knees on the outside corner. Good fastball. And the 1-1. Fouled away. Strike two. Bolsenbrook trying to strike out the side.
Holsenbrook in the last start versus the Disciples also had five consecutive strikeouts at one point. If he gets one more on David Wallace, that would match it here. Two outs, nobody on. Bottom of the second, 2 nothing. hard. The pitch fouled away. That was a little breaking ball. Wallace waited on it and got good wood on it, lined it over into the youth field where I believe a practice had been taking place. Still one ball and two strikes. A bunch of kids go running. One and two, here it comes. Chopped on the ground to Mitch Stefan, who lost it in the sun, and it goes right past him into right field. And uh, we'll see if that's going to be scored a hit. I guess it's already been scored a base hit. Mitch Stefan was there, and somehow that ball got past him, even though he couldn't see it. I mentioned earlier in the ball game that uh, the sun is an issue when we play games at this time of day. And Stefan, of course, knows that. He's played here for years. And that one he completely missed. First pitch is a strike to Luke Steinlein. Steinlein led off the ball game by drilling a single into left center field. He came around to score. That is the 12th run he's scored this year. And the pitch. Hit on the ground to the shortstop, Schmidt, who fields and goes to Lucas Jan at second, and that will end the inning. So the inning is over. No runs, one hit, no errors, one man left on base, and at the end of two innings complete here in Haar, it is 2-0 Disciples. This is Haar Disciples Baseball presented from dem Gesundheitsunternehmen MSD. We move to the top of the third inning here in Har. Two to nothing, the Disciples leading the Bookmitter Ligonera Regensburg. And for the Ligonera, they're going to send eight, nine, and one. Janis Mushik, Alexander Schmidt, and Lucas Jan to the plate against Michael Click, who's thrown 32 pitches. He's struck out four and walked no one, allowed only one base hit. Janis Mushik, the right hand hitter, playing third base today. Hitting 500 on the year. <laughs> that is a uh, four for eight with two doubles among his four hits. The first pitch was a strike to him. Oh, and one the count. Click coming after him with a fastball. And the next one coming right now. That's low, bounced and scooped by Thorpe. One ball and one strike. Oh, Click struck out two in the first. He struck out two in the second after Jimenez doubled off the wall. A pitch, a pitch that leaked over the inside part of the plate. Jimenez brought his hands in. Here's the 1-1. One -one. A good curve on the inside corner. Strike two. Another nice atmosphere here in Haar. The Regensburg and Haar fans, those that were man able to get through traffic. I saw Ben Ott, the uh, producer for League Air TV, here, and he said uh, traffic was uh, horrible. That's a paraphrase. Here's the 0-2. 
Fastball just missed outside. Two balls and two strikes. Got members of the softball team, the youth team. A nice sunny Sunday, uh, sunny Wednesday evening here. Click came set and uh, stepped off. Dr. No Skills is laughing at me for forgetting what day of the week it is. Every day is Sunday. Every day is Saturday. That's a better way to go out, I guess. Two and two. Inside, almost hit him, and Mushik now has a full count. Giannis has also drawn two walks. He's only struck out one time in 11 plate appearances. Pretty small sample, I guess. Three and two. Here it comes. Tapped foul. And Mushik, a very defensive swing. The Disciples got two runs in the bottom of the first inning. Steinlein singled, Ziegler tripled, Thorpe doubled. 3 balls and 2 strikes. Here it comes. Tapped weakly on the ground in front of the plate, fielded by Click. He throws to first and got his man. Well, you know that that was in the one lane on the field that's in the shadows. And so I don't think Dennis Wallace had to deal with the sun on that play. And it also looked for a minute like Click was going to wind up and fire a seed to the first baseman. But he didn't have to, and Mushik is out 1-3 on the putout. Alexander Schmidt will step up to the plate. One out. Top of the third inning, 2-0 Disciples. And the pitch. That's a strike at the knees on the inside corner. Nothing and one on Alexander Schmidt. Schmidt, the young shortstop, hitting at 349. 15 hits and 43 at-bats. Three doubles, a triple. 11 walks, he's only struck out five times. Talented young player. And the 0-1 pitch to him. Breaking ball, that's low and outside. One ball, one strike. When you have a guy like that batting ninth that you know is capable of always putting the ball in play and in Schmidt's case with some authority on it, that's a huge advantage for a manager and the 1-1. Fouled away, one ball and two strikes now. Schmidt had a good cut at that pitch. <laughs> Mr. Davidoff Smoker in the YouTube chat saying, every day is beer day. Well, we are in Bavaria, so uh, I'm not, not going to comment any further on that. Other than to say I agree with you. <laughs> one ball and two strikes. Here's the pitch. Grounded weakly back to Click, and it skips off his glove, rolls to Klein, who throws on the run, and it's not in time. As Schmidt, hustling hard all the way, beat it out. Would have been a nice play. The throw was maybe a little bit low to Wallace, but he scooped it. It caromed off the leg of Click, and Klein had to change direction and charge. But that's going to go as a base hit. So a one-out single for Alexander Schmidt, and now the top of the order, Lucas Jan steps up to the plate. That's the second base hit for the Legionnaire. air. Jan, his first time, struck out on three pitches. So now you have Schmidt on first base. Schmidt has pretty good speed. Wonder if he might do any running. Very short lead right now for him. Click comes set now. Schmidt extends the lead. And here's the pitch. Jan swings through a fastball. Strike one. I don't think Jan's going to see much else until he either hits one of those or stops swinging at it. Nothing in one. There's Schmidt being held on by Dennis Wallace, first base. Click gives him a look. There's one out in the inning. Two nothing disciples, top of the third. And the pitch. Strike two at the outside corner, 0 and 2. That one was maybe a little bit more hittable because it was down. Jan's been chasing the pitch up. That one, he let it go by. That's Austin Diemer. 
wearing number 23 right in front of your uh, screen there. It's as if he's in your living room. We bring you the action up close here on Our Disciples Baseball TV. 0-2 <laughs> oh to Lucas Jan. Schmidt off first base. Not going. The pitch is way high, and Thorpe with a fake to first base. And Schmidt is back easily. One ball, two strikes to count. One ball and two strikes. There goes Schmidt. The pitch is taken for a ball. The throw to second base is not in time. Thomas tried to tag him out on the leg on the way by. Boy, that pitch was close, but Thorpe coming out of the crouch might have blocked Dan DiBacco, the home plate umpire, from seeing that pitch. No, it was way outside. Never mind. Excuse me. Pitch was way high. And a stolen base for Alex Schmidt. He's in there at second base in scoring position. That, by the way, for him is his sixth steal in seven attempts. So he's been very effective in that department. So he's on second base. Two balls, two strikes, one out. Second consecutive inning, the league have had a runner on second base. With only one out, let's see how Click responds. He's very deliberate on the mound, but comes set two and two to Lucas Yawn. The pitch. Swing and a miss. He struck him out again. Yawn, not close to touching any of those fastballs. Very late, was tied up on the pitch. Looked like he's really looks like he's looking for something else. And sometimes when you're struggling, you can be your own worst enemy in that regard. Look at this pitch. Fastball in and Yawn. Just trying to yank the bat through the zone. Couldn't get it there, so there's two down. And now Matt Vance will step up to the plate. Vance struck out his first time. Click trying to strand a runner at second base for the second consecutive inning. The Disciples leading two to nothing. We're in the top of the third. And here comes the pitch after a bunch of checks on Schmidt on second base, and there's a good curve for strike one on the outside corner. Well, the difference between Mike Click and Mike Bolsenbrook in terms of the deliberateness with which they both work. Click is very, well, deliberate. <laughs> now he stepped off for a minute. He wants to make sure he's got the right sign. Of course, having the runner on second base might have something to do with that. They have to go through the series of signs. And now Matt Vance calls time. Bolsenberg, when he's out there, barely waits for the batter to be in the box. He is ready to pitch. 0-1 the count on Matt Vance. Alexander Schmidt on second base. There are two outs. We're in the third. And the pitch. That's a breaking ball. A little bit high. One ball, one strike. <laughs> Two runs, four hits, no errors for the Disciples. 0-2-0 for the league in air so far. One and one on Vance. Here's the pitch. Swing and a miss and very late on a fastball. Not Vance. Missed that train. One ball and two strikes. <laughs> One ball, two strikes. Two outs. Schmidt off second base. Click comes set. There's the one-two pitch. Coming right now. Got him swinging, and the inning is over. Fastball. Vance very late. No runs, one hit, no errors. One man left on base at the end of two and a half innings of play. It is 2-0 Disciples leading the Bookbender League in Air Regensburg. This is Hard Disciples Baseball presented from dem Gesundheit to name and MSD.
Hallo, Wiki. We go to the bottom of the third inning here in Har. The Disciples 2 and the Bookbender League in Air Regensburg nothing. And it's going to be 2, 3, and 4. And H. Sean Thomas, Christoph Ziegler, and William Thorpe against Mike Bolsenbrook, who's given up two runs on four hits. The two runs were in the first inning. And the pitch to Thomas. That's a fastball strike. Thomas, his first time grounded into a fielder's choice. He actually reached and stole second. He came around and scored. I think I mentioned earlier that Steinlein scored that run. That was a mistake. My apologies. One ball and one strike as the pitch missed outside. One ball and one strike to Nate Sean Thomas. Bolsenbrook working quickly. The pitch that is just inside. They want to appeal if Thomas went around. And no, he did not. <laughs> Patrick Meister, I think, was surprised by the fact that they were even trying to ask. And the next one is a strike on the inside corner. Two balls and two strikes now to Nate Sean Thomas. Bolson Brooks pitch. That's way high and outside, full count. Bolsenbrook, around 50 pitches, as is Michael Click, Click with 52. Of course, Bolsenbrook just now starting the third inning. Click is through three. Three and two in H on Thomas, and the pitch. A little cue shot, rolled past the mound, gloved by Schmidt, and he throws on the run, and a big stretch by Stefan, and they get the speedy Thomas at first base. Good play. That ball was, looked like it was cued off the end of the bat, and it went to the left of the pitcher's mound behind Bolsenbrook. Alex Schmidt, knowing who the base runner was, did not have a lot of time to make that play, and he did so flawlessly. 6-3 on the putout. There's one down. That's going to bring up Chris Ziegler as we take another look at Schmidt charging from the outfield, from the infield grass. He had to make a little jump throw, Derek Jeter style, I guess. Ziegler breaks his bat and rolls it to the right side. Lucas Jan. Gobbles it up and throws him out. And there are very quickly two down. That'll bring up William Thorpe. Thorpe, his first time, doubled. Ziegler had tripled his first time to drive home the game's first run. Thorpe doubled down the left field line to drive home Ziegler. That's with the second run, and that's where we stand. 2 nothing, Disciples. Bolsenbrook against William Thorpe. And the pitch. Thorpe shows bunt, pulls it back. The pitch is a strike on the inside corner. Thorpe doing that just to get Giannis Mushik to do a little movement down the third base side. If he really wanted to bunt, that would have been a good pitch to do it on. But Mushik now backs up. The 0-1. Strike two right on the outside corner. A little off-speed pitch, maybe a cutter or a slider. Not quite sure, but perfectly located. Thorpe behind in the count now, 0-2. Steps out to think about it a little bit. And there's Marcel Jimenez blocking our review. Nothing into the count. Here it comes. That one fouled off to the right. Thorpe just trying to put ball in play. That ball banging off the fence down the right field line just short of the Regensburg bullpen, and it caromed all the way back into fair territory. 
Two nothing disciples. We are in the bottom of the third. There are two outs. Nobody on base. No balls and two strikes to count on William Thorpe. Mushik is now very deep at third. The pitch just missed the outside corner. That is a tough pitch to take. It was off the plate, but still, when you see a pitch like that come in, it takes an enormous amount of discipline not to chase after it. The one-two. And he fouled it at the plate. That was another tough one. That's the changeup, possibly the same location as the previous one. This one looked like it was going to be in the strike zone. Thorpe had to go after it. And he was able to just get enough to foul it away. To the count, one ball, two strikes. <laughs> Bolzenberg is set. One and two, here it comes. And it's popped foul behind the plate. Von Garson giving it a look off to the right, but it's over the screen and lands in the youth field. Still one and two. Good battle between Thorpe and Bolsenbrook. Mike Bolsenbrook almost at 60 pitches now. The Disciples leading two to nothing. They got two first inning runs on three very hard hit balls against Mike Bolsenbrook. And uh, now he's set again, and Thorpe has asked for time because he wasn't quite ready. Bolsenberg trying to work as quickly as possible. Now he comes set the one, two. Sidearm pulled foul. And Bolsenberg dropping down, doing a little David Cohn impression. Look at this. And Thorpe got a piece of it, fouled it away. I don't think I've ever seen Bolsenberg do that. Still one and two. Here it comes. And it's off the plate away. Two balls, two strikes. Heck of a battle going on right now between Thorpe and Bolsenbrook. Thorpe took a very close pitch with two strikes for a ball. And he's fouled off three or four. Bolsenbrook trying the sidearm delivery. Tried that little changeup down and away and missed badly with that last one. So Thorpe trying to fight his way on base with two outs. The pitch on the way. And that ball is hit on the ground to the first baseman, Mitch Stefan, who feeds Bolsenbrook covering the bag, and they get the out. And the inning is over at a little friendly uh, banter between Bolsenbrook and Thorpe as the two were close to each other past the first baseline. The inning is over. The play goes 3-1. And no runs, no hits, no errors, nobody left on base. At the end of three complete here in Har, it is the Disciples 2 and the Bookbender League in Air nothing. This is Har Disciples Baseball presented from Gesundheitsunternehmen MSD. We move to the top of the fourth inning. The Disciples 2, the Legionnaire nothing. Mike Click on the mound. He's 
Struck out six in three innings, allowing only two hits, no walks. He's thrown 52 pitches so far. 35 of them have been strikes. And he's going to face three, four, and five. Eric Harms, Mitch Stefan, and Marcel Jimenez in the order for the Bookbender League in air as they will go to bat here in the top half of the fourth inning. Click the right-hander. Looks in for the sign from Thorpe. Infield is back. There's a pretty big hole on the left side between Siegler and Thomas. And the first pitch is a beautiful curveball for strike one to Eric Harms, who grounded to second base his first time. Harms has three home runs on the air, hitting 346. Was player of the week a couple of weeks ago. There's the 01. Fastball strike two. He's got that big hitch in his swing. No balls, two strikes. Top of the fourth, nobody out, nobody on. Two nothing disciples. And clicks pitch. That one is spiked into the dirt. Ball one. Click looking down at the landing spot in front of the mound after letting that one go. One and two to Eric Harms, the number three hitter, the designated hitter. And the pitch. Got him swinging. High heat. That is strikeout number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven for Mr. Click. Nothing fancy. And now Mitch Stefan will step up to the plate. Stefan, who flied to left field his first time. Well, I've seen him fake the bunt against the shift as you look at the defensive positioning the disciples are employing. Siegler is in the shortstop hole. Nate Sean Thomas is to the right of second. Richie Klein is in right field. And Stefan, I was going to mention that I would like to see him drop a bunt, see if the disciples change their plans with him. And he just tried to there, and he bunted right through it for a strike. So that bought the Disciples a strike on Stefan at the very least. 0-1. And the pitch on the way. That one's a breaking ball behind his feet. One ball and one strike. But I've seen Stefan show bunt a number of times, but I haven't seen him actually try it. That first pitch in this at-bat was the first time I've seen him even come close to trying to do it for real. The 1-1. One -one. Drilled high and deep to right center field. Deemer going back in the gap. He has the ball hit off of his glove, and it skips out. Stefan is at second base, and we'll see how that's going to be scored. That ball was crushed by Stefan. That's why he doesn't want to bunt, by the way. And Deemer... Ran a long way, fighting with that sun. And it hit the heel of his glove and popped out. And I think it's going to be ruled an error. Would have been a nice catch. But he was there, and he had the ball in his glove. And so I think they have put error up on the scoreboard. And indeed, it is an E8. Not the easiest of errors for Austin Deemer. So Mitch Stefan is at second base. Three consecutive innings, the Legionnaire have had a runner at second base. Now, as they had Marcel Jimenez at second base in the second. Alex Schmidt made it to second inning last, second base last inning, and now Mitch Stefan reaching on the error. And Marcel Jimenez, the hitter. Jimenez doubled off the left field wall his first time. Stefan on second base with one out and the pitch. Curve and it is fouled. Off to the right, strike one. <laughs> one strike the count on Marcel Jimenez. Pitch Stefan on first base. Mike Click with one out in the inning, trying to pitch his way through four. And the 0-1. Fastball cut on and missed 0-2. Oh 
And the high fastball has been working well for Click so far in the in this game. And Ligonera, you know, they're trying to lay off of it. No balls, two strikes. Click, who has seven strikeouts through four and a third. The Disciples two, Ligonera nothing. Mitch Stefan on second base. He hit a deep fly ball that was dropped by Austin Deemer and ruled an error, so he's out at second base. One out. Click from the set. 0 and 2. And Jimenez calls time. Stefan, but if Stefan is causing havoc on the base paths, that's a new thing. Mitch, not the speed demon that Jimenez is, for example, at the plate. 0-2 the count. And the pitch. A little bit outside, off the glove of Thorpe, but does not get far enough away for any advance from Stefan. <coughs> One and two. We are in the fourth, 7.30 p.m. And the pitch, that's high. Two balls and two strikes. Well, you know, this ball game is most likely gonna be still being played when the sun goes down and they have to turn on the lights. And that might be interesting, just looking ahead. About 7.30, probably have about an hour and a half left of, well, maybe an hour and 15 minutes left of real daylight left. Two and two, here it comes. Breaking ball, just missed, a little bit low, full count. That's, I think that pitch fooled Jimenez, and he's happy he didn't get rung up. Let's take another look at this. Now you can see a little bit low and outside. Well, Jimenez looked pretty confident in his take on that, so give him credit. That's a tough one to take. Three and two. We'll click throw it again. Yes, and he missed outside. Another breaking pitch, and Jimenez works a walk. That's the first walk issued by either team today. And now the number six hitter, David Grimes, will come up to the plate. Grimes struck out looking his first time. If runners on first and second... Jimenez is at first. Mitch Stefan is at second. David Grimes. So with one out in the inning, I doubt he'd be bunting. But with his low batting average under 200, maybe. Siegler is back at third. The pitch. That's a curve on the corner for a strike. Nothing in one. David Grimes, I gave you his stats. Last time he was up, he's hitting only 160, four for 25. He's one of the young players that, of course, are coming through this Regensburg system. They have the academy and the new sport internat. It was the 0-1. Swing and a miss very late on a fastball, 0-2. A click reaching back for a little extra. Click had a 1-2-3 first inning. And he's allowed a base runner in each of the second and third, the error allowed Stefan to reach and then the walk to Jimenez. So two on with one out here in the fourth inning. Two nothing, Disciples lead the league in air. Top half of the fourth. The 0-2 pitch on the way to Grimes. Fastball is high. One ball, two strikes. Grimes that time was able to lay off of it. The on deck hitter is Elias von Garson. Mike Click comes set. One ball, two strikes. Runners leading first and second. One out. Here it comes. Fastball called. Strike three on the inside corner, and Grimes knew it. And he's caught looking for the second time. That is eight strikeouts for Michael Click. Right on the black on the inside corner. Grimes knew it. So two down, and Elias von Garson, the next hitter, will step up to the plate. Von Garson, his first time, also struck out looking. So Click trying to strand base runners in each of the last three innings. 
in scoring position. Stefan at second, Jimenez at first. Two down in the inning. And the pitch to Von Garson, fouled away, strike one. Mike Click now has his sign. He comes set. 0-1 the count. And the pitch. That is a strike on the inside corner. 0-2. Click is very deliberate, but he's very effective. He takes a deep breath, thinks about what he wants to do. He's got his right foot on the rubber, and now he's putting his left foot in position to look in for the sign from Thorpe. Let's his hand hang down. Runners leading first and second. Click is set. 0-2 pitch on the way. Here it comes. Strike three swing and a high fastball. And the inning is over. Click with an error and a walk sandwiched in between. He actually struck out all three outs of the inning. So no runs, no hits, one error, and two left on base. And at the end of... Three and a half innings of play here in Har. It is 2 nothing Disciples. This is Har Disciples Baseball presentiert von dem Gesundheitsunternehmen MSD. So we move to the bottom of the fourth inning, and Mike Bolsonbrook's day is done. He went three innings, and he's replaced by Philip Meyer. Meyer, who is going to face Austin Diemer, who smacks one foul on the first pitch. Strike one to Diemer. It'll be Diemer, Richard Klein, and Miguel Pinheiro in this inning. Five, six, and seven in the order. Philip Meyer in four and two-thirds innings has an ERA of 7.71. The young right-hander, and the pitch. That is outside and high, ball one. One ball and one strike. Meyer in four and two-thirds innings. Two hits, four earned runs, 11 walks. That's not what you want to see, three strikeouts. And the pitch, swung on and missed Deemer way out in front of a changeup. So Mike Bolsonbrook, three innings, two runs. Pitches inside, two balls and a strike. He gave up four hits. No walks, four strikeouts. And he threw 61 pitches. 45 of those were strikes. The pitch to Deemer is low, and the count now full. Three balls, two strikes. You can see where Meyer, he's got a good fastball, but that secondary pitch is the one that he still has to develop. Lanky right-hander. Coming on 
So it's going to be a bullpen committee game, I guess, for the league in air. The pitch, swing and a miss. Deemer chasing a bad ball out of the zone. And Philip Meyer gets a strikeout. Let's take a look at that pitch. So, the guess that was pretty hard, disciples. I think it was a changeup or a breaking ball down and away. And that'll bring up Richard Klein. Pitch to Klein. That's a strike. Well, Meyer in his four and two thirds innings with 11 walks so far, throwing strikes, although he did go 3 2 on Austin Deemer, the first hitter. Sometimes all it takes is that first one. Curve, and that one is in the dirt. One ball and one strike. There's a fly ball hit in the air to left field. David Grimes is ranging over to his left and makes an easy catch for out number two. And that will bring up Miguel Pinheiro. Klein. Jammed on that pitch. And David Grimes with the easy play in left. So two outs, nobody on. Two nothing, the disciples leading the Bookbender League in air. Miguel Pinheiro at the plate and the pitch is low, ball one. The disciples scored two runs in the first inning. And that's been it. Remember that game against Mannheim? They scored four runs in the first inning and they ended up winning 4-3. Pinheiro cues one off the end of the bat to Mitch Duffon, who fields it and flips it to Meyer, who's covering, and that's the third out of the inning. 3-1 on the putout. 1-2-3, go the Disciples. Very good inning for Philip Meyer at the end of four innings complete. We go to the top of the fifth. It is 2-0 Disciples. This is Hard Disciples Baseball, presented from Gesundheit so in MSD. We go to the top of the fifth inning, and it's still 2 nothing. The Disciples leading the Book Bitter League in air. Mike Click has thrown 72 pitches through the first four innings. He's got nine strikeouts against one walk and only allowed two hits. So he's been very good. Mike Bolsenbrook removed after three innings. Somewhat strange. It's not like the League in air have a game this weekend. The uh, Finkston break is coming up. But Kai Gronauer. Removing Bolsenbrook after only 72 pitches. We hope there's nothing wrong with him. Giannis Mushik, the number eight hitter, stepping up to the plate against Mike Click. And the pitch is hit to left field for a base hit. A hard ground ball smacked between Nate Thomas and Chris Ziegler. And Mushik is on first to start things here. That is the third base hit allowed by Mike Click. Take a look at the pitch. Mushik went up there hacking on the first pitch, looking for something down. Mentioned Click has been getting a lot of strikeouts with his high fastball. And Mushik got one that was a little bit more below the waist and hit it very hard in between the third base and shortstop hole. So now the number nine hitter, Alex Schmidt, 
with Mushik at first base. Very short lead, and the pitch to Schmidt. He squares and pops up the bunt, and a diving catch was made by Mike Click. Mike Click diving off the mound and snagged that ball just barely before it hit the grass. Dan Dubaco made the call right away. And you hope Click is okay. I wonder if he made have, might have landed awkwardly. Let's take a look at this on the replay. It was a bad bunt. Click diving to his left, and he landed. Looked like maybe on his wrist, but he popped right up, ready to throw behind the runner at first base. That's a tough thing for the runner Mushik at first base as well because you have to judge whether he made the catch or not. Mushik had the wherewithal to check with the home plate umpire and knew that the catch was made and that he had to actually go back. So Mike Click appears to be okay. There's one out in the inning. And now the top of the order, Lucas Jan, who has struck out twice. So Mike Click showing that he can field his position. Top of the order. The first three hitters in the Ligonier order have struck out five out of six times against Click. And the pitch. That's outside ball one to Jan. Jan has been chasing high fastballs. <laughs> One and oh. Bushik still on first base. And the pitch. That curve is high. Two and oh. The Disciples, two runs. They have four hits and one error. That was the dropped fly ball by Deemer. It did not cost them anything, as the Ligonier have not been able to score. But the Ligonier have had runners on in every inning except the first. The 2-0 pitch to Jan popped up behind the plate. Thorpe giving it a look. Does he have room right up against the screen? He does. And a throw behind the runner at first base as Mushik was a little bit slow to get back, but Will Thorpe knows this ballpark well. And a foul pop out for out number two. And Matt Vance will come up to the plate. With two down and Giannis Mushik, the runner on first base. Mushik singled on the first pitch of the inning. And two outs later, he is still there. Matt Vance his first and second time struck out. He's been overpowered by the fastball from Click so far in the game. We'll see if he changes his approach at all. Of course, baseball, big game of adjustments. You always remember the last thing a guy did to you to get you out if you're the hitter. And the pitch, swing and a miss, and that was the breaking ball. He got him with fastballs, so why not go after him with a breaking ball, I guess. Click wanted another ball. One strike the count on Matt Vance. There it comes. A high fly ball, foul territory off to the right. Stein line, a long run. He will never get there. That ball lands. Looked like it landed on the pitching mound in the Regensburg bullpen. Steinlein was going full on towards that fence. Strike two on Matt Vance. Another nice crowd here in Haar. Beautiful day. And of course, between these two teams, Regensburg and Haar, you always get a lot of Regensburg fans here. So that adds to the atmosphere. Click with an 0-2 count, checks on Mushik and comes set. Here's the pitch. Fastball, that is high. One ball and two strikes to count. There are two down. We are in the top of the fifth inning. The Disciples leading 2 nothing. They got both of those runs in the first inning against Mike Bolsonbrook. One and two. Click kicking at the dirt on the mound a little bit. Looks in for the sign from Thorpe. So far there's been absolutely no sign of running from Mushik at first base. And the pitch. Fastball is outside. Two balls and two strikes.
Giannis Mushik, in case you're wondering, is 0 for 1 in stolen base attempts. 2-2 to Matt Vance. Here's the pitch on the way. Check swing. Did he go? They appeal. No, says the first base umpire. Vlado Chupic. Close pitch, a fastball. Outer half. Just off the plate, and the count now full. Three balls and two strikes. Take a look at the replay. Now the disciples were starting to walk off the field thinking they might get the call, but it's a do again now. And now Mushik will be running with two outs and a 3-2 count. There he goes, the pitch fouled away again. And everybody has to go back. Mushik has to return. Mushik led off the inning with a single, then Alex Schmidt tried to bunt, and he popped it up, and Mike Click made a great diving catch to the left of the mound, snagging it with the backhand webbing of his glove just before it hit the grass. Then he got Jan on a foul pop-up, and he's three balls and two strikes on Matt Vance, the number two hitter. Two nothing disciples lead. We are in the fifth with two outs. And time is called. Matt Vance asks for it. Mushik on first base. He will be going with the payoff pitch coming. Two down, three balls and two strikes. Click comes set. And here's the pitch. Inside, and it hit him. And Vance throws the bat away. He was hit on an elbow guard. Click, I think, apologized to Vance. Vance did not look out that way. So a hit by a pitch. You know, Click with a pretty high pitch count. It's not what he wants to do. So two on, the tying runs are on, and you have the number three hitter, Eric Harms. So highly unlikely that Click was hitting Vance on purpose there. But I think sometimes when you're hit by a pitch, it's just aggravating, of course. So now, runners on first and second with two outs, but the number three hitter, a dangerous hitter with three home runs on the year, stepping up to the plate. Eric Harms has grounded out and struck out Swinging. <laughs> Mushik at second, Vance at first with good speed. Two nothing disciples, the pitch. Breaking ball, and that's outside for ball one. Remember, the disciples have Kevin Treasel in the bullpen. They could theoretically also use Darren Fisher if they wanted to. He pitched on Saturday, though. Here's the 1 0. Breaking ball, check swing, he went around, strike one. We'll play umpire Dandy Baco seeing that one for himself. When you have a big hitch in your swing like that, it makes it very difficult to stop because there's so much forward momentum. Of course, it also gives you a lot more power, or one thinks that it does. One ball and one strike, runners leading first and second with two outs. Click is set, here's the pitch. Swing and a miss, a breaking ball away, Harms chased it. One and two, click one strike away from getting out of this inning again. The fourth consecutive inning in which the Legionnaire have had a runner in, on second base. They had a runner at second in the second, a runner at second in the third. Two on in the fourth, and they have two on here in the fifth. They have not scored yet, however. Two nothing disciples. Click still sitting on nine strikeouts. One and two to Eric Harms. There's the pitch. A slow chopper to the left side. It's gloved by Ziegler. He throws low, and his throw kicks away from Wallace. Around third, and coming to the plate is Giannis Mushik. He will score, and it is two to one. Looked like Ziegler had trouble getting the ball out of his glove, and then he threw it low to Dennis Wallace, and it trickled away towards the home plate side in foul territory, and it's two to one as Harms reaches on an E6. Runners still on first and third as Mushik came around to score on the error. And now that's the second error in the ballgame for the Disciples. And Chris Howard out to the mound to have a short chat with his pitcher, Michael Click. Click. Who has thrown 
88 pitches so far. And now you got to deal with Mitch Stefan, a guy who has basically been taking batting practice against his old team in the seven plate appearances. Let's look at his bucks. This is in the game last week on the 1st of May. Mitch had four hits and six at-bats. Today he is 0 for 2, but he did drill the last fly ball to deep center field. It was dropped by Deemer and ruled an error, but it was a very loud error. So Mitch is up there now with two on and two out. One run is in. It's an unearned run. The runners are on first and second. There are two outs in the inning. Stefan, who's over for 2. And Click is going to have to throw some more pitches to get through this fifth inning here. As the sun is going down, the lights are on now. There's the pitch. And a fastball strike on the outside corner, nothing in one. No defensive shift this time on Stefan. Siegler is playing normal position at third. But Nachon Thomas is right behind the bag at second base. Well, and Richie Klein is still in short right field. Siegler has to be near third in case he has to receive a throw there. The 0 1. Fastball is inside. 1 and 1. Well, the inning started, Giannis Mushik singled on the first pitch, but then the great catch on the bunt attempt. <laughs> Mike Click catching the bad bunt off the bat of Alex Schmidt, and then got Lucas Yawn on a foul pop up. Looked like he might get out of it. He had a 3 2 count on Matt Vance, and then he hit him. And then the error on the ground ball off the bat of Harms. Should have been the third out. Instead, a run has scored, and the inning continues. Two to one. These two teams, by the way, only a half game separates them in the standings. Regensburg, nine wins, four losses. They're in second place behind the Heidenheim, Heidenheim Heideköpfe, who are 10 and one. Haar right behind him in third place at eight and four. One and one on Mitch Duff on the pitch. Swing and a miss, way out in front of a breaking pitch. And the count, one ball and two strikes. Runners leading first and second. Vance at second, Harms at first. One and two on Mitch Stefan. Click is set. And here comes the pitch. Got him swinging, and the inning is over on an off-speed pitch. Ten strikeouts for Mike Click through five innings, but an unearned run does come around to score. One run, there was one hit, there was one error, and two left on base. And at the end of four and a half innings of play, we're halfway through. It is two to one, the Heart Disciples leading the Bookbinder League in Air Regensburg. This is Heart Disciples Baseball presented from them. Gesundheit zu unternehmen, MSD. We go to the bottom of the fifth inning. Two to one, the Heart Disciples leading the Bookbender Legionnaire Regensburg. Philip Meyer on for a second inning of work. And he's going to face Dennis Wallace in the first pitch in there for a strike. Wallace struck out on three pitches against Bolsenbrook his first time. Wallace, the number eight hitter, followed by his brother David, and then the top of the order, Luke Steinlein. The pitch, a big curve, and that one drops in for strike two. Well, I just Googled, and sundown today is at 8.38 p.m. That is 38 minutes from now, and we are in the bottom of the fifth inning. So we're going to see probably weird baseball. Here's the pitch low. 
One ball, two strikes. I don't think I've ever seen a full-on night game in a field that has lighting that really only reaches about 30 feet above the infield. Curveball tapped foul. But uh, I think we might see that tonight. <laughs> so, schauen wir mal, was wird passieren später heute am Abend. We might enter the baseball twilight zone. Right now, we're still in normalcy, although that pitch is outside. Two balls and two strikes. Imagine it gets dark, and then the ball game is tied. I mean, League and Air have a loaded bullpen. The Disciples have all of their pitchers there today. 2-2. Two -two. That's low and outside, 3-2. and two. When the lights become a factor in this ballpark, anything hit in the air is, well, as Vin Scully once described it, it's an e-ticket to Disneyland. 3-2, and two, tapped fouled on the third base side. Count full still, 3-2 and two on Dennis Wallace. Wallace mentioned he's 0 for 1. Marcel Jimenez right there. You can see what it's like to be the center fielder. The pitch outside for ball four. Dennis Wallace, a good at bat, taking a walk against Philip Meyer to lead things off. That is the first walk issued by League and Air pitching, and the second in the ball game as the Disciples have only issued one. Mike Click, designated hitter David, David Wallace, will step up to the plate now. Wallace, he singled his first time. He had a bouncing ball that Mitch Stefan lost in the sun, and it bounded right through his legs into right field. So he's up there now, and he squares to bunt and pulls it away, and the pitch is high for ball one. Giannis Mushik at third is creeping up on the edge of the infield grass, the little cutout. The 1-0, high again. Wallace was squaring to bunt again. Remember, Philip Meyer has a history of wildness, at least so far this year, and I think Wallace is going to keep showing bunt until Meyer at least throws one strike. I don't think he'll bunt one until at least there's one strike on the count. 2-0 is the count right now. The pitch, high, three balls and no strikes. The top of the order, Luke Steinlein is on deck. No activity in the Legionnaire bullpen from what I can see. So this inning for now is Philip Myers. 2-1, to one, the Disciples lead the Legionnaire. 3-0 the count, and the pitch. That's a strike right in there, 3-1. and one. Wallace taking all the way, of course. The bunt will not be on now, I don't think. David Wallace, a slender guy, slightly open right-hand stance. Runner off first base, and the pitch. He does bunt, and it's a good one up the first base side, fielded by Meyer. He underhands it to Stefan for the out. And Dennis Wallace moves to second base. So, Dennis Wallace is on second. There's one down for the top of the order. Steinlein singled and then was out on a fielder's choice on the bases. And Mike uh, Paco Garcia is going to go out to the mound and have a chat with his pitcher in this situation. But still no activity in the Legionnaire bullpen, so this is a strategic conversation that is taking place right now between Paco Garcia, the pitching coach. Garcia, of course, was a former pitcher and pitching coach with the Hard Disciples back in 2012, 2013. So he's no stranger to this ballpark as well. We are in the bottom of the fifth inning. And the meeting is over with. Luke Steinlein will take his place in the batter's box. Garcia hustles back to the dugout, and Elias von Garson trots back to his position behind home plate. Philip Meyer, the young right-hander who works from the third base side of the pitching rubber, has the runner at second base. Luke Steinlein, the hitter, and the pitch. That's a curve, and it drops in there for a strike. It's not much bite. It's more... more slow, and that's what throws off the hitters, because his fastball does have some velocity to it, especially when you compare it to that balloon curveball. And he steps off.
Now he's back on, runner on second base, the pitch. There's that curve again in the dirt. One ball and one strike, good block by Elias von Garson. The 1-1, one, one. popped foul out of play. That was a fastball. And the count one and two. Steinlein had a good hack at that. That pitch was in his zone. He likes to drive the pitch away to right center field. And he had a good cut at that one and fouled it off. So Meyer ahead, one and two. There's one out and the runner on second base. The pitch is outside. Two balls and two strikes now. Nate Sean Thomas is on deck. The outfield is playing straight away. Grimes in left, Jimenez in center. Vance in right. Vance is the only one still probably who has to deal with the sun. The 2-2 pitch. Curveball swung on and missed. The ball was in the dirt. Von Garson has to throw it to first base, and Stefan, shading his eyes from the sun, makes the play. So Steinlein is out on a strikeout. And then 2-3 goes the put out. Remember, with the runner on second base and first base unoccupied, Steinlein can actually try to run to first on that. That is Myers' second strikeout in the ball game. And now Nate Sean Thomas is going to have to try to drive home that run. With two down, Nate Sean Thomas is over 2. He reached on a fielder's choice. He stole the base and then scored the game's first run. The Disciples only have two runs. They're leading 2-1. to one. They got both of their runs off of Mike Bolsonbrook in the first inning. The pitch. Fastball, that's high. Dennis Wallace is on second base. He walked and was bunted over to second. Philip Meyer with a 1-0 count on Nate Sean Thomas, batting left-handed. Here it comes. That's low, good block from Gun Fun Garson. 2-0. But you think to the 3-1 pitch that Philip Meyer threw to David Wallace, who had been squaring to bunt, and Meyer couldn't get the ball over the plate. And then he finally threw one, and then even on 3-1, Wallace was bunting. He laid down the bunt. Here's a 2-0. Curve, and that's way outside. 3-0. But if the Disciples don't score, you know, you think, well, if maybe Wallace takes one more pitch, perhaps Meyer would have walked him. Meyer's been walking the tightrope control-wise. 3-0 on H. on Thomas, and he takes ball four up and in. So there are two on for Chris Ziegler. Two walks in the inning for Philip Meyer. And Chris Ziegler, who is one for two, he tripled to drive home Nate Thomas, and then he scored himself, then he grounded out. But he also made a costly error last inning that allowed Regensburg to score their one run. You know he would love to atone for it here somehow with the bat, the pitch. That's a curve in the dirt, skips away from Von Garson. He can't find it, but it's right under Ziegler's feet. And Dennis Wallace wisely staying put. You don't want to get thrown out at third base with your number three hitter at the plate. There are two outs in the inning. Two outs, two on. The pitch to Ziegler. That fastball catches the outside corner. One ball and one strike. The runner at second, Dennis Wallace. The runner at first, Nate Sean Thomas. The last gasp of sunlight peering over the right side of the field. The pitch, Ziegler waves and misses for strike two way out in front of that changeup. That was a good pitch from Meyer. That did not look like the curveball that he had before. That looked more like a changeup. That was much more effective. One and two. On Chris Ziegler, two on with two outs. Two to one, the score. And the pitch. That's high and outside. Two balls and two strikes. Good close ball game. The Disciples with two in the first. Regensburg with one in the fifth. The 2-2 pitch. Curve ball swung on and missed. Strike three. And the inning is over. Philip Meyer pitches around a couple of walks. No runs, no hits, no errors. Two left on base.
And at the end of five, it is two to one Har. This is Har Disciples Baseball presentiert von dem Gesundheitsunternehmen MSD. We move to the top of the sixth inning here. It is 8.13 p.m., only so much sunlight remaining before things might get weird here. There are lights. The Disciples leading 2-1. to one. And for the Legionnaire, as they face Mike Click here in the sixth, they will send five, six, and seven. Marcel Jimenez, David Grimes, and Elias von Garson to the plate against the right-hander who has thrown 92 pitches. He's struck out 10, walked one, and allowed three hits. The one run is unearned and the first pitch is swung on and missed by Marcel Jimenez strike one Jimenez doubled to deep left and then he walked so he's been on baseball times nothing in one of the count to him and here it comes that one is low scooped by Thorpe one ball one strike Still clear. There's the sunlight reflecting off the building in right field off the windows. So we still get some bright reflections. There's another good slider swung on and missed. All three pitches in the sequence have been breaking pitches. And Jimenez swung at the two that were close to the strike zone. And he didn't get either one of them. Click bounced the other one. So the count one ball, two strikes. Nobody out. Top of the sixth, two to one. The disciples lead. Nobody on base. And the pitch curve is a little high or a little, I think that was a slider, I think. And Click let go of it too high. He fell off the mound. Two balls, two strikes to count. Jimenez would love to get on base to try to get things started for the league in air. And the 2-2. Two -two. Fastball right down the pipe, strike three. Jimenez looking for something else. Take a look at this. That is strikeout number 11 for Mike Click. Well, he's shown a penchant for racking up the Ks so far in his first two starts. Uh, nothing fancy about that. I think Jimenez was thinking too much on that one. So two, uh, one out, rather. And the number six hitter, David Grimes, will step to the plate. Grimes over two with two strikeouts. Click has struck out seven of the nine batters, ironically enough, the only two who have not struck out. The eight and nine hitters. There's a fly ball to right field, and it lands in front of Luke Steinlein for a base hit. Hit off the end of the bat. So David Grimes reaches first with a single. 
That's the fourth base hit. This is a little similar to Click's game against the Ulm Falcons. There were base runners. He gave up a little blue pits and a walk here and there, and then maybe an error allowed another base runner. And so he never really had clean innings, but he, you, just, you look at the numbers, and, I mean, he's still dominating. 11 strikeouts, four hits. The one run is unearned. So now Elias von Garson, the hitter with one out, runner on first base. Von Garson is over two with two strikeouts. Grimes had been over two with two strikeouts before that single. He's being held on by Stefan. And time is called. Now, I did not speak with the umpires before the game, but in the past when there's been the threat of, you know, impending darkness, they have suspended the game before. Here's the pitch on the way. Hit on the ground to second. Thomas gloves it. He flips it to Klein. There's one. The relay to first is scooped by Dennis Wallace, and that ends the inning, a 6-4-3 double play. Dennis Wallace has been mastering the scoop over at first base in the recent weeks, and that was no exception. 6-4-3, and the inning is over. No runs. One hit. No errors, and nobody left on base. And at the end of five and a half innings of play, it is still two to one disciples. This is Hard Disciples Baseball. Presented from them Gesundheitsunternehmen to name an MSD. We go to the bottom of the sixth inning here in Har. The Disciples leading 2-1. to one. And it's 8.19 p.m. And sundown is at 8.38 p.m. And so it remains to be seen what will happen as far as how the game will conclude. There's the possibility that they could suspend the game if it gets too dark because the lights are not really sufficient here. Will Thorpe is the hitter, meanwhile, and the first pitch from Philip Meyer, a curveball, it gets the outside corner. Strike one, Meyer, this is his third inning of relief. He's been very good, has not allowed a hit, only two walks and two strikeouts. And the you know, one swing and a miss, good changeup. Nothing in two on Will Thorpe. Thorpe, the number four hitter, and then Austin Deemer and Richard Klein. The Disciples got their two runs in the first inning, and that's been it. Mike Click has been pitching... Very good baseball for six innings. This one up and in. Thorpe has to back away. Uh, I was having a conversation in between innings with Megan Hilton, who's the official scorer, and she mentioned something about that uh, it could be that the local house rules, the ballpark which is owned by the Gemeinde Har. I'll tell you after the one-two pitch to Thorpe. Breaking ball outside and in the dirt, two and two. The Gemeinde rules for this field are that we're not supposed to be playing a game or being, you know, doing loud announcements, playing music for longer than a half an hour after sundown. So if that's the case, then that means that this ball game ends at 9.18 p.m., regardless of where we are. Could be suspended, of course. Swing and a miss, strike three. Down goes Thorpe. And Meyer has found that changeup. And let's take a look at that on the replay. This is a very good changeup. That's exactly where you want to locate it. 
you want to make it look like it's going to be a fastball at the knees on the outside corner, and then the hitter starts to chase it, and suddenly it's six inches lower. One out, nobody on for Austin Deemer. Deemer 0 for 2 with two strikeouts. And he shows bunt and lays one down the third baseline, but it goes foul. He would have totally beat that one out for sure. He, like, totally, dude. He would have beat it out. <laughs> My colloquial speech shining through. I do find it interesting that the house rules would be a half hour after sundown because usually, at least in Bavaria, the rule is 10 p.m., kind of no matter where you are, like in, in apartments and stuff with noise. So it remains to be seen. That ball is smacked to left field, and it hangs up long enough for David Grimes to catch it. Deemer hit that little curve ball on the screws and didn't get any lift on it, and he lines out to the left fielder for the second out. <laughs> I'm going to put that in my scorebook as L7. And so Richard Klein steps up, although now the pace has picked up in this ballgame. You never know. Maybe we'll get three innings in in the last 25 minutes or so. It is definitely getting hard to see the ball. Pitch to Klein is a strike at the knees in the outside corner. Meyer was a little shaky with his command in the first two innings that he came in, the fourth and fifth, but this inning he's hitting the spots. Curveball, that one is low. One and one. Oh and one. Fastball on the outside corner. That was a one one pitch, and now it's one and two. One ball, two strikes, two outs, nobody on. We are at the bottom of the sixth inning. Two to one hard leading the pitch. Swing and a miss, strike three. An excellent inning. For Philip Meyer, two strikeouts, no runs, no hits, no errors, no nothing. And we go to the seventh inning here in Har. It is the Disciples 2, the Bookbinder League in Air Regensburg 1. This is Har Disciples Baseball. Presentiert vom Gesundheitsunternehmen MSD. We move to the top of the seventh inning, two to one. The Disciples leading the Bookbinder League in air, Regensburg, and Regensburg's going to send eight, nine, and one to the plate against Mike Click, whose next pitch will be his 100th of the ball game. Giannis Mushik, Alex Schmidt, and Lucas Jan. Sundown now 13 minutes away officially, and this ball game in the top of the seventh inning. I believe it's up to the umpire's discretion how long they play. And a good breaking pitch on the outside corner from Click for strike number one. Click has been great. Four hits over six innings, one unearned run, 11 strikeouts and one walk. That's what you want. And the 0-1, fouled away, 0-2.
Giannis Mushik has one for two. He grounded back to the pitcher and singled. He scored the only run for the league in air. That was an unearned run. One run on four hits, no errors for the league in air. Two runs on four hits, two errors for the Disciples. 0-2 on Mushik on the pitch. Fastball down the pipe, strike three. Strikeout number 12 for Mr. Click, and he has now struck out eight of the nine hitters in the lineup, and the only one he is, has not struck out is coming to the plate right now. That's Alex Schmidt. Mushik, you could see, was kicking himself for letting that pitch go by, or at least not trying to fight it off. Schmidt singled, and then he popped up that bunt. Click made a great catch on. That was in the fifth inning. But imagine if Click doesn't make that play. Here's the pitch to Schmidt. Fastball down the middle, strike one. Har two, Regensburg one. There's one out. We are in the top of the seventh inning. Click wants Thorpe to go through another sign. And the pitch on the way. Hit on the ground to the left side. Charged by Thomas. He gloves. Fires to first and not in time. He took a little bit too much time setting his feet before throwing to first. And Schmidt is very quick getting down the line and beat it out. Thomas has quite a rifle there as an arm, but he just he held on to the ball a little bit too long as he had to set his feet and really cock back to get off a good throw. And Schmidt was already at first base. So Schmidt, two for three now, still has not struck out in the game. Top of the order, Lucas Yawn. Yawn is 0 for three. He has struck out twice and fouled out to the catcher, Will Thorpe. The tying run on first base with good speed, that's Alex Schmidt. He has stolen a base in this game already. And the pitch to Jan, that's low. One ball and no strikes. Well, you'd hate to see a ball game like this get shortened on account of darkness. But if they do suspend it, I don't know when they would make it up, when they would finish it. One ball and no strikes. And a throw to first. Schmidt dives back with the right hand. Ten minutes away from the official sundown time now here in Har. It's 8.28. And after a while, I mean, you have to figure, plus there's a scoreboard. I think Schmidt might have jammed his hand diving back into the bag. But you have this scoreboard in center field. If I show you on the in this camera, see that bright light behind the center fielder, Austin Deemer? That is right in the batter's vision. It's slightly off towards left center, so for Lucas Yon, it's probably a bad spot. There's the 1 0. That's high. Two balls, no strikes, but it's not really anywhere else the Disciples can put that scoreboard, and it's usually not a problem because we don't usually play night games here. This one's turning into one, though. Alex Schmidt on first base, two balls, no strikes. One out, top of the seventh. And the pitch inside, a breaking ball, 3-0 now. And Lucas Jan, Matt Vance is on deck. There you see Schmidt on 3-0. He won't be running anywhere. The pitch, that's a strike. Fastball on the inside corner. 3-1 the count now. Well, click now at 107 pitches. Trying to fight through this seventh inning. And the 3-1, there goes the runner. Swung on and fouled away, and now a full count. So Schmidt was running on the 3-1 count. 3-2, three and two, you kind of figure he might go as well. He makes his way back to first base. It was a fastball high and out, out over the plate, Jan. 
looking for something to drive, took a hack at it. A long look for Click over at Schmidt, who's on first base. Now he's on the rubber. Three and two the count. Let's see if Schmidt is going to go again. Click now comes set. He's not going, and the pitch is high for ball four. And the Legionnaire have the tying and go ahead runs on here with one out in the seventh inning. There is some activity in the Disciples' bullpen. Thorpe going out to the mound. The last thing you really want here is stalling because the clock is ticking on the amount of time we can really realistically continue to play this game. It's dark. The lights are on, but they're not bright. Chris Howard is making his way out to the mound very, very slowly. And uh, that probably is an indicator that the Disciples might be going to the bullpen here. And Howard sauntered out to the mound and said one word to click and turns around and heads back to the dugout. Matt Vance is the hitter. That walk, by the way, was the second issued by Mike Click. He walked Jimenez in the fourth inning. He hit Vance back in the fifth. He's also struck out Vance twice. So a very big spot in the ballgame. You know, if this were the big leagues, you'd be debating the pitching change and the strategy, but in the Bundesliga, it's generally the case that the starter is still more effective than almost anybody that can come in from the bullpen. There's the pitch to Vance, fastball. That's a strike at the outside corner. There's one out in the inning. Disciples would love a double play ground ball right here. The tying run, Alex Schmidt is at second base. He's got good speed. The go-ahead run is Lucas Jan. He's on first. One strike, the pitch low. And the count, one ball and one strike. The Disciples, they do have Kevin Treasel available in the bullpen. And he's been good, but he's not working out regularly with the team, so it's a little bit of a risk to bring him in, especially with runners on base. Nachon Thomas is out there on the field, as is Luke Steinlein. They have not had a chance to warm up. There's a 1-1 pitch. Off the plate away, and the count, two balls and a strike click. This is most likely his final inning. Might very well be his final hitter if he does not retire him. Matt Vance, the number two hitter with a 2-1 count. Schmidt at second. Jan at first, the pitch. Fastball, that's a strike. Letter high. Two balls and two strikes to count. Click at 113 pitches. That's a normal pitch count for the Bundesliga. We regularly saw 130, 140, even 160 last year from Ryan Bollinger. Two balls, two strikes. Two on, one out. And the pitch. Fastball is high and a full count. Now the next pitch is a huge one for Click and the Disciples. You got two on. Will they send the runners? Runners on first and second. One out, three balls and two strikes. And they do not go the pitch. Strike three called. And there was a pickoff play on Schmidt at second base, and he just dove back after that. Matt Vance called out on a high fastball. And it was right down the pipe. That is strikeout number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 from Mike Click. Two down, and Eric Harms, who is 0 for 3. It was Harms that hit the ground ball that Siegler threw off the mark to first base for an error. That allowed a run to score last inning, two innings ago, rather, excuse me. And the pitch, swing and a miss. Click trying to put a cap on this pitching performance. 
13 strikeouts and two walks, six and two-thirds innings. He's been very good. Trying to get through this seventh inning with the Disciples still leading two to one. He's had base runners in every inning except the first and still battled through it. 0-1 to Harms. Here it comes. Tried the breaking ball. This one was too far outside. One ball and one strike. Regensburg has stranded six base runners in this ball game. They've got two more on here. Their only run is unearned. One and one. And the pitch to Harms. Fastball is high. Two and one. Two balls, one strike, two outs. The tying run, Alex Schmidt is at second base. The go-ahead run, Lucas Yawn is at first. Two and one on Eric Harms, the number three hitter. And the pitch. Breaking ball low and outside, three and one. And Click, you can see, really trying to just get a little bit extra, trying to reach back into that tank and see what's left. He's pitched a wonderful ball game so far, 13 strikeouts, but still needs to get one more out to get through the seventh inning. Three and one on Harms, the pitch. A high pop-up to right field. Steinlein, if he can see it, he should be able to catch it, and he does both, and the inning is over. And an excellent job by Mike Click. Seven phenomenal innings with 13 strikeouts for the right-hander. And he is collecting high fives on his way to the dugout. The Legionnaire do not score. They get no runs on one hit, no errors, and two men left on base. It is time to stretch here in dark Munich. It is sundown now, folks. It's 838. The sun is officially down, and it is a night game, so... We go to the bottom of the seventh inning, two to one. The Disciples leading the Bookbinder Legionnaire Regensburg. This is Hard Disciples Baseball presented von dem Gesundheitsunternehmen MSD. Welcome back to the bottom of the seventh inning. And they just cut take me out to the ballgame short because we're trying to fit this game in before it gets too dark. First pitch to Miguel Pinero is in for a strike. Philip Meyer through three innings has been great. Two walks, no hits. He struck out four, and Miguel Pinero takes a breaking ball low, one ball and one strike. It's the bottom of the seventh inning. And Philip Meyer trying to Work his way through the eighth. He came on in the fourth. There's a line drive right center field. That's a base hit for Pinero. It drops in the gap. It is grabbed by Jimenez. And Pinero leads off the seventh inning with a single. A little fly ball that drops in. That's the Disciples' first base hit since Bolsenbrook left the game. Bolsenbrook gave up four hits and two runs. He would be on the hook for the loss if the Disciples are able to hold this lead. So now Miguel Pinero is on, and I would expect perhaps Dennis Wallace might try to bunt him over. Wallace is over one, and he pushes a bunt up the first base side, and it rolls foul just at the last second. Strike one. Well, you can see the, the dirt on the infield looks dark. The lights are just not bright enough to light up the whole field. 
There's still, of course, some skylight. You can see the blue of the sky, but it's going to be tough to see the ball pretty soon. Pinero on first base, and the 0-1 pitch. Wallace takes a ball outside. He was squaring around again. One ball, one strike. Wallace struck out against Bolsonbrook. He walked in the fifth inning against Meyer, made it as far as second base, and was stranded there. The Disciples have stranded four base runners in the game. Ligonier have stranded eight. The 1-1. Bunted to the right side, grabbed by Stefan, and he throws to first in time to get Dennis Wallace. Pinheiro moves to second base. Play goes 1-4 as the second baseman Lucas Yan had to run over and cover. Wallace bunting that ball pretty hard. Last week he tried to bunt a ball and he almost hit it down the right field line. So now his brother David Wallace is going to try to knock home Miguel Pinheiro to give the Disciples an insurance run. And the pitch. That's up high. Pinero on second, the pitch pulled foul down the third baseline. There you see the runner on second base. The pitch, low and outside. One ball and one strike the count to David Wallace. Now you can see the sky, a couple of clouds passing through. Pinero off second, the pitch. Missed low. Two and one the count now. As David Wallace steps out to take a little practice swing. Philip Meyer has been great in relief of Mike Bolsonbrook. And Meyer steps off. We are in the bottom of the seventh inning. Two to one, the Disciples leading. Wonder if they're going to make a pitching change in the next half inning. The pitch. Swing and a miss. Foul tipped, rather. Strike two. Two balls and two strikes to Philip Meyer. From Philip Meyer to David Wallace. The Disciples got two runs in the first inning. On a triple from Chris Ziegler and a double off the bat of Will Thorpe. And that's been the entirety of their offense. But so far, it's been enough. The pitch just missed outside. And that is ball four. And so Luke Steinlein steps up to the plate now with runners on first and second. And the pitch, he squares around and takes that big curve, drops in there for a strike. Steinlein today, he singled to lead off the ball game. Then he bounced into a fielder's choice and struck out. One for three. His single set up the rally. He was retired on a fielder's choice, but the Disciples got two runs that inning. The pitch. A chopper slowly hit to short. Schmidt gloves. He feeds Jan. There's one. The throw to first. Not in time. And the inning continues. Steinlein hustling down the line. Pinheiro stayed put at third base. So first and third with two outs. Ball was hit too slowly. So Steinlein again reaches on a fielder's choice. David Wallace is retired 6-4 for the second out, and now Nate Sean Thomas will step up to the plate. Nate Sean today is 0 for 2. He has walked. He did score a run and steal a base, however, in the first inning after he reached on a fielder's choice. So runners on first and third, two outs, bottom of the seventh inning. You know what? This is a heck of a ball game, guys. And the big curve drops in for a strike. That's that little lollipop balloon floater that Meyer drops in for a strike every now and then. And his fastball is good enough that you just you can't sit around and wait for that pitch. 
And when you can throw them for strikes, that's tough. Especially when you can't see the ball in the dark. Here's the 0-1 instead of throw to first base. And Steinlein is back. There you see Steinlein leading off first base. The pitch in the dirt. There's that curve. And it's ball one. One ball, one strike. The Disciples have two runs on five hits. They've made two errors in the ballgame. Regensburg has one run on five hits. They have not made an error. Their one run was unearned. The pitch. Steinlein pops it up. Foul territory. Mushik has a play. He's underneath it, and he makes the catch to end the inning. So the Disciples threaten, do not score. They get no runs, one hit. There were no errors. And two left on base. And we're going to the eighth inning here in Har. It is still two to one, Disciples. This is Har Disciples Baseball presented from the Gesundheitsunternehmen MSD. Well, we go to the top of the eighth inning, and Kevin Treasel has taken over for the Disciples. In ten innings this year, he has an ERA of 1.8. Seven hits, three runs, but only two were earned. He's walked six. He's only struck out four, so his strikeout numbers are way down, but he's been throwing strikes and been very effective in the limited role that he's been able to take on with the Disciples this year. Of course, his job has taken him to Dresden, and... He's only partially available as a player, and he was available today, perhaps because of the long holiday weekend. And so here he is facing his old teammate, Mitch Stefan. It is two to one, Disciples. We are in the top of the eighth inning. So far, no worried about any kind of uh, darkness effect on this ball game, other than the fact that it's dark. But <laughs> we're going to play on. Mitch Stefan. Steps up to the plate. He is 0 for 3 today. 2 to 1, the Disciples lead in the eighth inning. The first pitch is low and inside, ball one. One ball, no strikes. It's getting hard for me to see my scorecard. That's how dark it is here. One ball, no strikes. That one missed inside, 2 0. Thorpe setting up outside both times, having to reach back over the inner part of the plate. By the way, there's one other ball game going on tonight, and Ulm is leading Stuttgart 5-2 to two after five innings. Here's the 2-0 pitch. That's a strike on the outside corner, 2-1. and one. Treasel looked like he dropped down a little bit. Most of the fans still here. 2-1. and one. Outside slider. And that one... Way outside, Thorpe having to lunge off to his left to get the glove on that one. Three balls and a strike on Mitch Stefan, the cleanup hitter. After that, it'll be Marcel Jimenez and David Grimes. Four, five, six in the order here in the eighth inning. Ligonier trailing by a run. Here's the pitch. Popped foul out of play, three and two. Treasel throwing a little sidearm, it looks like. We'll watch Kevin Treasel's delivery. Maybe it's slightly lower arm angle than he usually has. I wouldn't say it's full-on sidearm, though. Not like when Bolsenbrook dropped down on 
Will Thorpe back in the fourth inning, I think it was. Payoff pitch coming from Treasel to Mitch Stefan leading off the eighth. Here it comes. And it's up high for ball four. A leadoff walk. And Stefan draws the walk. Well, Mike Click was fantastic in his second Heart Disciples start. He was he pitched seven innings, five hits, one unearned run, two walks, and 13 strikeouts. Through 121 pitches, 77 of them were strikes. Marcel Jimenez is one for two, and he squares around. And... Pulled it back. The pitch was outside for a ball. One ball, no strikes. Well, Stefan, almost think if you're going to bunt him over, you might as well pinch run for him as well. Get some better speed. And the bunt is pow popped foul off to the right for strike one. As Jimenez got a breaking pitch. One ball, one strike. There's nobody out. It is two to one Har. We are in the bottom, excuse me, top of the eighth inning. Marcel Jimenez at the plate, right hand hitter with power. He squares around again and pulls it back, and the pitch is just off the plate, a breaking ball. And the count now two balls and a strike. Well, Treasel, obviously not throwing as hard as he did last year when he was pitching regularly, but still trying to hit the spots to be effective. He's got enough movement on his pitches to do that. Two and one. And the bunt is laid down to the first baseman, Wallace Fields, and flips it to Klein covering for the first out. Stefan moves to second base. And the sacrifice pushes Mitch over there, so the play goes 1-4. Actually, it went 3-4 as Wallace fielded it. So there's one away. The tying run is at second base. And I still half expect maybe to see a pinch runner for Stefan, but... I guess they want to keep his bat in the lineup, and he's also a good defensive first baseman. David Grimes, the hitter now. Grimes is one for three. He struck out twice and then blooped a single. It's not a guarantee that Stefan would score on a base hit here. The pitch. Curve, and it missed outside. One ball, no strikes. This game was started by Mike Bolsonbrook and Michael Click. Bolsonbrook only lasted three innings, time is called. He was relieved by Philip Meyer, who's been great in relief the whole way since the third inning. For the Disciples, Michael Click was fantastic over seven innings, and now Kevin Treasel's on the hill. And the pitch. That one is in there for a strike. A breaking ball, one and one. One and one on... David Grimes, and a fastball, and that one hit him right on the elbow guard that he wears. And so there are two on. And now Elias von Garson, the hitter. As we take a look at this pitch up and in, it looked like a little slider. And Philip Howard. Out to the mound to have a chat. That's actually Chris Howard talking to Kevin Treasel out there on the mound. And it was a very quick discussion, and I think it was a very one-way discussion. Something to the effect of throw strikes. So Treasel has walked a batter and hit a batter. The only out in the inning was the sack bunt off the bat of Marcel Jimenez. Elias von Garson today is 0 for 3, struck out twice and grounded into a double play. Wouldn't the Disciples love another one of those here? Von Garson, right-hand hitter, does not wear batting gloves. It's cooling off a little bit here. Still very clear, though, the pitch. And there is a fastball strike. Sometimes a little pep talk will just bring the fight back. Treasel going right after Von Garson. Von Garson taken all the way. Runners lead first and second. The pitch is high. Throw behind the runner at first, and he's back as Grimes got the right foot in there. As Dennis Wallace was running in to receive the throw from Thorpe. That's a William Thorpe special right there. They get two, three people every year on that play.
And the pitch. That's off the plate away. <laughs> Two balls and one strike to count. Here it comes. Line drive caught by Treasel, and that's an Indian ending double play. As David Grimes had no chance to get back to the base, that ball was crushed back to Kevin Treasel, and he turns it into a double play. Well, you never know how it's going to happen. A line drive right back to Treasel von Garson. Couldn't hit it any harder. It was ticketed for center field. If Treasel doesn't catch that ball, this game would be tied. Instead, it's a line-out double play. And the inning is over, and the league and error do not score. They get no runs, no hits. There were no errors, and one man left on base. And we go to the bottom of the eighth inning here in Har. It is two to one, Disciples. This is Har Disciples Baseball, presented von dem Gesundheitsunternehmen MSD. We go to the bottom of the eighth inning. Still two to one disciples. Chris Ziegler up there against Philip Meyer, and there's that curve, and it's in for a strike. Nothing in one. Ziegler today is one for three. He tripled to drive home a run in the first inning, and then he scored himself, and that is the difference in the game. In fact, he's had a hand in all the runs in the game as his throwing error led to the Regensburg run. Pitch is low, one ball and one strike. What a way for that top of the eighth inning to end. Curveball in the dirt, two and one. The runners were on first and second. Elias von Garson hit an absolute rocket back to Kevin Treasel, who caught it and doubled David Grimes off of first base. A line drive to the pitcher turning into an inning ending double play. Pitches inside, three balls and one strike. And the Disciples somehow still with the lead in this ball game. League and Air have had base runners in every inning except the first. Three and one on Ziegler. And he swings through a fastball. The count now full, three and two. It'll be Ziegler, William Thorpe, and Austin Deemer. In case you're wondering how bright it is in left field, I can't even really see David Grimes, the left fielder. He's, uh, I assume he's out there. Pitch is hit on the ground, up the middle, base hit into right center field past Lucas Jan. And Siegler's got his second hit of the day. The sky is not completely dark yet. There's still some chance that a hitter, uh, an outfielder, might be able to see a fly ball. Some chance. William Thorpe, the hitter, so far there haven't really been any high fly balls since the sun went down about 25 minutes ago. So Will Thorpe with Siegler on first base. And Meyer steps off and wants to have a chat with his pitcher. Thorpe today, he doubled in the first inning to drive home Siegler. That gave the Disciples their second run. And then he grounded out and struck out. So he's one for three today. Bottom of the eighth inning. This ball game has been very entertaining. Mike Click was fantastic for the Hard Disciples. 13 strikeouts in seven innings. There's the pitch to Thorpe. There's that big curve, and it 
falls over the inside corner for a strike. Nothing in one. Ground ball, just foul, pulled down the third baseline. Strike two. Thorpe waiting on that little loopy curveball and drilling it down the line. That's the thing, Meyer, he does have a good fastball, so if you look for that curveball, you're going to be late on the fastball, I guarantee you. So you have to somehow adjust mid-pitch. Thorpe recognized that one. 0-2, to Siegler on first base. And the pitch fouled away. Thorpe with a good cut. That ball off to the right and over the screen. Still no balls, two strikes. And here comes the 0-2. This one bounces four feet in front of the plate, and somehow Von Garson, I think that ball was stuck in Von Garson's mask for a second. Took a second for it to come down, or maybe he smothered it against his chest. No, it was stuck in his mask. One ball and two strikes. Siegler off first base so far hasn't been going anywhere. Taking his lead. There's the pitch. Again, this one goes to the backstop. And Siegler can walk to second base. The ball caroms all the way back to Von Garson. Two balls, two strikes. That's a wild pitch. And now Thorpe can drive home the Disciples' third run of the game with a base hit. You have excellent speed at second base. One, two balls and two strikes to count. Thorpe up there in a big spot. There's nobody out here in the bottom of the eighth. Two to one hard. Siegler on second base. The pitch. And he reaches for one and fouls it off. That was that little changeup fading down and away. Thorpe was trying to protect with two strikes. That pitch probably would have been called ball three, but you only have a split second to make up your mind. Still two balls and two strikes. Philip Meyer comes set. And the pitch, there's that curve, and it's rolled out to the left side, gloved by Mushik. He looks the runner back and throws to first in time. Good play. Ziegler had started towards third and then had to retreat to second base with Mushik running right at him. And that's a good play by Giannis as he throws out Thorpe 5-3. There's one away here, and now Austin Diemer will step up to the plate. And Kai Gronauer is coming to the mound. Not sure if he's going to remove Philip Meyer. I think he is going to. He's clapping his hands, and he's taking the ball from the young right-hander. And so we're going to have a pitching change here in Har. Right now it is two to one disciples. Philip Meyer was great in his relief outing here in relief of Mike Bolsonbrook. He goes four and a third innings. He's responsible for the base runner. And we'll be right back after a short break. It's two to one disciples.
Well, the new pitcher on the mound for the league in air is the 20-year-old right-hander, Daniel Mendelssohn, another former Fusen Royal Bavarian. He has also played for Team MLB Europe in the past when they went off to play in the Asian Winter Games. And this year, in 11 innings, he's got an ERA of zilch. He has struck out eight, walked five. He's not given up an earned run. He did give it up one unearned run. Nine hits in 11 innings. And he's coming in with one out here in the eighth inning in relief of Philip Meyer. Meyer pitched four and a third innings, gave up two hits. So far, no runs, but he's responsible for it. Siegler, who's on second base. He walked three and struck out five. So Austin Diemer at the plate. Diemer today 0 for 3. Hit the ball very hard his last time, though. There's one out here in the bottom of the eighth. Two to one har, and Mendelssohn's first pitch. Swung on and missed. Strike one. Fastball inside. All right, it is legitimately hard to see now. <laughs> Nothing in one. Mendelssohn from the stretch. Checks on Ziegler. And the pitch. That's in the dirt. Blocked by Fungarsen. Fungarsen has done a good job back there today. He's only had one or two pitches get past him. You see that bright scoreboard in center field. It looks worse on camera than it really is, but still. Pitch. Foul to the plate. And the count. Now one ball and two strikes on Austin Diemer. Diemer struck out in the first. He struck out in the fourth. He hit that line drive to left field in the sixth. Mendelssohn ahead of him, one and two. The pitch chopped fouled on the third base side, and the count still one ball, two strikes. Ten minutes after 9 p.m. here. One ball, two strikes. And here's the pitch. That fastball is outside. Mendelssohn falling off to the first base side of Mount. He's got that high sock look. Pitching against Deemer, who's got the stirrup socks. And all the fans, they might be sitting in the dark, but they're enjoying themselves. Two and two the count. Here it comes. A high pop that's out of play. Still two balls, two strikes. Well, this is what the field looks like, and it actually looks a little brighter on TV than it does in real life. Got to say that. Mendelssohn set Siegler off second base. There's one out, 2-2 two -two the count. And now the pitch. A line drive to right field. That is a base hit over near the line. Siegler rounds third. He's heading home. The ball is grabbed by Matt Vance. The throw to second base is not in time. Austin Deemer with a run scoring double. And the Disciples lead 3-1. to one. Well, he fouled off a couple of pitches. Then he got one that he could take the other way. Let's look at it on the replay. Fastball, and he sliced it. And no chance Matt Vance was going to get there. That ball kept tailing away from him. Landed maybe 5 to 10 feet or so. Shy of the foul line, you'd see Ziegler motor around to touch home. And the Disciples have an insurance run. And now Kai Grunauer walking slowly out to the home plate umpire, Dan DiBacco. I think this is going to be a light-related question. We had a ball game like this last year that went late, and then storm clouds came, and it got really dark. And it was windy, and then there was lightning, and that's when the ballgame got suspended in the seventh inning. And Gronauer now is walking over towards... Philip Howard, or towards the other umpire, Gronauer trying to stall, it looks like, and uh, get this game suspended. 
And now Grunauer is talking to Patrick Meister down the third baseline. And let's see what's going to come of this discussion. I mean, it is not ideal lighting conditions. That much we know for sure, but everybody's got to deal with the same problem. And Grunauer, I'm not sure why he's waiting until now to make the plea because they've been trailing the whole game, but now looks like all three umpires are going to converge and have a meeting. This might result in a decision right here and now. Of course, you do have to be concerned for the safety of the players when they can't see a ball. And we await the decision. The three-man crew, Dandy Baco, Vlado Cupic, and Patrick Meister deciding what to do. You have a whole bunch of uh, considerations to take into account, such as when would this ball game be made up? The end of it, the disciples are three outs away from a victory. They only need three defensive outs to win this ball game. Kevin Treasel is the pitcher right now for the disciples. And the umpires are discussing. It is discretion of the umpires. And that's it. This ball game is going to stop right here. Let's see if that means they're suspending it or if they're going to call it. So Tibaco gave the safe signal, which means we're stopping. I do not mean I do not know if that means we have reached a decision and the game is over or if the game is suspended. The disciples, even some of the League and Air players are coming off the field wondering what exactly is going on. So right now, Philip Howard and Chris Howard are discussing things with the umpires down the left field line. The Disciples are leading 3-1. to one. There's only one out in the inning. Well, the Disciples are high-fiving Austin Deemer. Dan DeBacco and Philip Howard. Chris Howard, that's Chris Howard. Howard is looks to be visibly upset. It's kind of interesting that Grunauer waited until just that moment after the run scored to come out and make a complaint. It's been dark for a while now. Meanwhile, the entire Legionnaire team is meeting out in front of their dugout. The discussion is still taking place between the umpires. That's Dan DeBacher, the crew chief, discussing things with Chris Howard. This game for sure is going to stop now, but I'm just waiting to find out whether the game is over or if it's suspended. Well, Howard is getting more and more animated. Tobacco's walking away. The three umpires are over there, off on the first base foul side, and they are walking off the field. My guess is that this is a suspended game, and that's why the Howards, Chris and Philip, are upset, because then it means the Disciples are going to at some point have to play. the top of the ninth inning, and they might have to do that in Regensburg because these two teams are going to play again in another week. Well, this game right now, I don't know if it's over or if it's just suspended. My guess is that it's, it is suspended because otherwise you would see Disciples celebrating a victory. Well, uh, I'm going to leave the broadcast on until I know something. And I'm going to go and try and find out. <laughs> so I will be right back, folks. I'm going to take off the headset and run down there and try to figure out if it's a suspended game officially. That's my guess. I'm about 90% sure the game is suspended. But I will find that out, and I'll come right back and let you all know. So don't go anywhere.
Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I have an answer for you. The game has officially been suspended, so it is not over. And it will be concluded at some future date. Well, that's going to be exciting. The Disciples leading 3-1 to one in the bottom of the eighth inning. They have a runner on second base, Austin Deemer. And uh, I'm going to leave my scorecard right there because that's where it was suspended. I don't know when it's going to be resumed, but I know that these two teams will meet again in the near future, and it might possibly be in Regensburg where they play the final inning. Who knows? But right now, the score, three to one, the Disciples leading in the bottom of the eighth inning. The game is not over, but the broadcast is, so I hope you enjoyed it. And be sure to tune in uh, next time, which is sometime in the distant future. I think May the 31st is my next broadcast versus the Heidenheim Heidegger. So I hope you've enjoyed. My name is Tim Collins. Don't forget to subscribe on YouTube. And have a nice evening, everybody. Enjoy your long holiday weekend and be safe. Thank you very much for watching.